Hey everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. And if you want to get your money's worth, you'll stay right here. WNS Podcast. <laughs> Everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. Incoming transmission. You're listening to the official Wrestling News Source Podcast. For all of your information, go, 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 go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Or find us on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler Bear, and Doug. Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. Tyler Bear. Doug. And we welcome you to episode 117 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. And guess what? We're on the Twitter. And it's at WNS Podcast for the main site. The WNS Source. The, the one Twitter. Uh, we're also on Talent at WNS Podcast. Absolutely. So welcome to the show. We're going to have a lot to talk about, but first we would like to welcome a good buddy of ours, the one and only up? Curtis. Hey, man. Thanks Ooh, for having me, yay. dude. Thanks for the shirt. Yeah, welcome, uh, rock that shit. welcome to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate Curtis it. Appreciate of Gulf it. Coast Power Pro Wrestling. Yep. Get back in the swing of things, man. April 27th. About Can't time. Wait. Yeah, I know. Everybody, I'm tired of everybody emailing me, but you know what? We got to finally book, <laughs> so everybody should be happy. There you go. So all the stars are coming to all Beaumont. All the stars. All the stars coming back to Beaumont. It's going to be a good time. Good. Yeah, y'all's good buddy Richard Cranium will be there. Oh, the MSA guy. oh, well, I mean, you could. You don't have. To, do you really have to book him? I mean, well, he kind of goes with the Maverick, and it's it's, no. it's like a two for one deal. I've thing. I've seen plenty of matches we'll take with his the Maverick. Hat and <laughs> came <laughs> and the vest. No, Can we have the vest? Went in the jacket last time. Didn't he have a jacket? Something like Silver that. Jacket I don't know. Thing. Burn it. So welcome to the show, everyone. Going to kick things off. By starting off with some iTunes reviews that we had, because I uh, uh, recently found out how we can check some of the, uh, the overseas uh, and different countries' iTunes. How? So, well, you go to iTunes, and you select the, the country that you want to check, and there you go. it allows you to. So, um, there may be more than three, but each of the pages, it only goes up to three. So, you know, if we, if we miss some, we apologize, but let us know, or send us a screenshot or something like that. Uh, Doug, do we have any uh, for the uh, for the states this week? No. Okay. So uh, we're gonna kick kick them off. Uh, the first one coming to us, coming from the one Tom Lowson. That can only mean Mister Thomas. Drop it low, son. Drop it low, son. Drop it, drop it low, son. And he says, "Well, first off, the subject is the very best podcast out there with five star ratings. So thank you very much on that one." He says, I'm at the age where I have friends who remember the Attitude Era, but lost interest in pro wrestling not long after it ended. Therefore, my constant love of pro wrestling has always been something of a personal matter as to avoid mockery and impudence. Impudence? I don't know. So you Stop can... Stop using big words. Easy. Are you telling me or Thomas, him? Oh, okay, Thomas. good. Okay, so, <laughs> so, you can, so you can imagine my uh, pleasure upon finding this gem of a podcast in late 2011. Through the next 100 plus episodes, Danny, Tyler, and Doug have provided excellent commentary on the week in wrestling, as well as some of the funniest things to ever grace the human ear. One of my favorites is Doug confessing his love to Dane O'Brien and wanting to have his babies. Wow. But, <laughs> but what I've enjoyed just as much as each weekly installment is the community of people that I've been able to meet through WNS Podcast. Tasty Bobby, Red Robin, Jonathan Crow, Wife Swap, Johannes, Stings Like Ali, Landau, Rhino, Tex Lone Star, Seth Rickson, and Landau. more. Landau. Hey, you put Landau, so have to take it up with with uh, Mr. Lowson here. It's great to have met so many genuine people. Then we come to the host, who are some of the finest host one could ask for in a podcast. And now I have the pleasure to call friends. Keep up the great work, guys. Bound Bound for Uli series winner Thomas Drop It Lowson. All right. That's how it's done. We certainly do appreciate we it. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much, Thomas. To my eye. That is. It's, it's a touching moment. So uh, the next one. Thank oh, you, Thomas. Hang on. Experiencing technical difficulties. Hang on a second. This always happens. Damn Facebook. I know, right? 
Log off of one. Let's go back to MySpace. <laughs> no. Uh, next one coming to us from Brian from Melbourne, Australia, with the subject, Awesome WWE Podcast, another five-star rating, saying, This is undoubtedly the best wrestling podcast on the net. It's focused primarily on WWE wrestling, but also features... Take that, Cole Cabana! <laughs> <laughs> but also features occasional call us. <laughs> but also features occasional guest interviews with indie stars. Each episode, the guys review the week's prior WWE shows, examining them in examining each match in depth, and also examine all pay per view events. They provide a cool insight into the wrestling world, looking at the wrestling business as a whole, and examining the nuances of each course of action. I'd highly recommend this podcast to any true wrestling fan out there. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank we you, certainly Brian. do appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> Next one coming to us from, you can't even pronounce this name, B-C-J-C-I-N-H-Z-H-Z-H. <laughs> uh, subject, awesome, with five stars. This one's coming from Australia, saying, you guys are awesome. Love your podcasts. So thank you very much. Yay. It's always, you know... Whether they're short, whether they're long, we always love getting a, getting a review. Thanks for stroking our egos. Boys. Yes, we do appreciate it. Next one coming to us from Canada by Piano Man 282 Jesus Christ, how many do we have? Seven. Wow, people yeah. are, are going to be turned off if this is our, their first episode. Well, yeah, we, you know, we don't, you know. We don't normally do this. We're, we're trying to catch up for, okay. for all the ones that we've missed. Because, yeah, so. You know, we don't know when these were posted. We're not egomaniacs. We're, we're just, just, we're trying to catch up on yeah. them. So, so bear with us. Yeah, bear with us. We're almost there. Uh, but it's from Piano Man 282 with the subject, forget the rest, stick with WNS, five-star rating, saying, looking for wrestling news, weekly WWE TNA uh, coverage, exclusive interviews, look no further than the WNS. Your number one source for wrestling news, views, and opinions. WNS podcast, the place to be. Forget the rest, stick with WNS. So thank you very much, Piano Man. Certainly do appreciate that. Next one coming to us from John McCarthy. I feel like we should have broken these up into segments. Do you feel that? You've already said a lot. So yeah, just break we're the, almost, we we're almost there. Like Next one coming to us from Canada as well. John McCarthy, excellent podcast, five stars. Uh, really good listening on here weekly. Very enjoyable debates and some funny opinions on all things wrestling. Uh, they seem like a good bun bunch of lads and also provide fantastic service on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping you're referring to WN Source, not, well, no, he's referring to us. WNS Podcast. You're welcome. Clearly. We do what we can. You're welcome. So, <laughs> I think this is the last one, if my count is correct. I don't know. I can't count. Uh, DJLT, with the subject informative and fun. Jolt? I don't know. You thought you were tuning in for the WrestleMania special. We're getting we will get to that. But you're tuning in to hear to us. the egomania That's special. Right. Wrestling Thanks, guys. podcast. Making informative, us feel all good. Informative and fun. Five stars. This podcast is great. So funny. It's free flowing conversation. Makes it a pleasure to listen to. Great job, guys. Thank you. Uh, this will be our last one. I I can almost I can almost you tell lied. it's from Deutschland. That's right, Germany from von Dimitri ninety three. You should listen to I this. Know that guy. You should listen to this podcast. Great show every week with the subject perfect with a five star rating. Damn, thank you. So thank you everyone who uh, who posted a, an I iTunes review more. for us. No, that's the last one. So we certainly do appreciate it. Um, like I said, we you know we apologize if these were posted. You know, previously in the past, um, but we just now found out how to how to get to them. So, you know, unless unless people post constantly like that, uh, that's not going to happen. We'll just do one or two a week. Yeah, we're really we sorry if you're like this is your first exposure yeah. to us and it's us like giving each other hand jobs. For, like, but welcome. Minutes. If it is your first episode, <laughs> now you know what you're in did you for. Say hand jobs. You did, yeah. oh. but <laughs> thought that's what I heard. But I'm just double checking. <laughs> <laughs> in all, in all, but in all honesty, like, um, I really thank you to all those people yeah. who uh, took the time to give us a review. Um, you know, definitely makes this show worth doing. We know there are people out there listening and, and appreciate it. So thank you, honestly. Thanks. We do appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Curtis, have you subscribed to us on iTunes? Have you given us a five-star no, rating I, and a I review? I don't have iTunes account, man. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Okay. 
I see how it is. All right, so moving on I'm into you everywhere else, but iTunes. Sorry, sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and t- and tout. I don't have tout. I don't. I don't that's it. that's the key one right there. That's, oh, y'all make that's more important than it. iTunes. Oh, I, I don't, man. I'm, if you're missing I'm, out, I'm kind of in the stone age. We have like a what, bit. like four followers on tout. Yeah, no, I don't know. Bad. When was the last time we even checked that thing? What? Months. Just months. Just, yeah. just delete it. It's been a while. Does anybody <laughs> tout anything anymore? I mean, really. People who watch Raw. Yeah, WWE. This, this the only once. <laughs> Never Tell heard us of, your answers. N- never heard of that shit until you watch Raw, and it's like, what the fuck is well, that's because they own like forty percent of it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's <laughs> they invested well, in the they company. Have to, they have to keep pushing. <laughs> it. They're like, please, someone use it. So, uh, moving on into Raw, the go home show for WrestleMania. Uh, we'll kind of just blow through these because you know it's the go home show. Um, we'll touch up on a few of the, you know, the main topics, I guess, to talk about. Uh, and then we'll get into our WrestleMania 29 predictions. Uh, but we'll kick things off with uh, John Cena coming out, cutting a promo. The fans actually giving him a boring chant. Um, you know, it, it sounded similar to some of the promos that we've had in the past from Cena, you know. Um, but I felt like he added a little bit more to it. It, it. it seems, it makes me question if he's in this match for redemption or revenge, you know. But what do you what do you guys think about it? Well, I think they wanted it to play out as a redemption story, but mm-hmm. I think that they realized that that people weren't buying into that because yeah. John Cena is not really a guy who honestly needs redemption. Yeah, I mean he he, he said it himself. This is the one thing that has eluded his career is a loss to the Rock, and mm-hmm. uh, he wants his win- he wants his win back. But well, he could get that anywhere. If it, I, I hope it's not going to be like last year. I mean, that match was to me was the shits, and I sure <laughs> in the hell didn't want to see it again this year. But who am I to put matches together over there? I guess, but you know, I don't. I'm not really into that. It's like one of the matches I could care less to see mm. kind of the whole mania, to be honest. Um, so I could care less really who comes out on top or bottom. It don't matter. <laughs> just that's just my opinion, though. I mean, I'm it's. It's kind of played out like it really is. So it's like, if Cena wins this time, are they going to have another match in 30? Thrice in a lifetime. To uh, see who really is the best, like a rubber match or whatever. And I hope that's really not the case. Three years for three matches. Please no. Please, Lord, help me know. I feel like John Cena is a little bit damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Because Mm. if he's too hokey, people are going to call him out on that. He went out and cut a serious promo. They chanted boring. The guy can't win with 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 most fans. No, you don't have to love the guy, but you got to acknowledge when he's solid. And I think uh, he's that's often overlooked. Right. Uh, but Tyler, do you feel that they've sort of moved into instead of redemption, he's now looking for revenge? Because he said he came out and said, you know, I I want this to haunt the Rock for the rest of his life. Yeah, it, it seems like it's going that way. Um, I think the week before. It seemed like it. I don't know. To me, it did like it was redemption, but you you know also saw the other side of John Cena, or more I guess what not arrogant or. Uh, he's got a, he's got some you know beef with the Rock. He's yeah, got a, so a pent up frustration. Uh, yeah, it, I don't know. To me, it seems like it's more than redemption. Okay. So. How about you, Doug? Well. <clears throat> Some of the things I want to kind of talk about here, I think, kind of tie into one of the Q and A's we have, and I don't know if we want to like segue like that all in together. Well, we only have one question for this week, so you want to kind of throw it all in here all at the same time? Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll go ahead and cover it. <laughs> because um, let me set it up because I, I feel like it'll introduce the 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 question is kind of like touching on <clears throat> to talk about what Tyler was talking about. There was a there was a point in. Uh, in his promo last week, well, it wasn't really a promo. It was a Q and A with all the legends, and uh, mm-hmm. it was like a point counterpoint with The Rock and Cena, um, where he showed like points of frustration and and maybe even like a point of obsession, like he had been obsessing over this one yeah. loss, um, which he he hadn't really led on to for the majority of the year, but it looked like it kind of like peaked mm-hmm. through here. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of buzz of like. Is this going to be, like, are they going to turn him heel off of this? Is this... The highly rumored, you know. Yeah. Um, Hope not. <laughs> is... You want to go ahead and read this question? Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it. Well, the it question as... is from, from Victor. Victor. Uh, there you go. Okay. You do it. I can't do it. 
Victor. So, uh, but Victor has uh, people. People clamor anytime Cena acts different that it will be a possible heel turn. But I've got a different thought on my mind. Cena said himself he's done everything in his career and has conquered everything and everyone except The Rock. My question is whether he's a heel or a face. If Cena beats Rock at Mania, where does he go from there? Um, see. He has a good point about the anytime so he does a, something a little out of character, people yeah. shout he'll turn. And it's really hard to say because is it foreshadowing or is it red herring? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I tend to believe that it's red herring because, like, I don't think people bought into the redemption storyline as is and they needed something else to kind of hook people. And I thought, yeah. like, like Victor says, anytime he's slightly out of character, people start shouting he'll turn. Which, I don't know what's next for the guy. Um, it's real, I think it's kind of hard to call. Like, win or loss, I don't see. I, I think Punk has taken some time off after yeah. Mania. Uh, Rock is not going to be around full time. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a, a, a heel on the level of a Cena. Or, if you were to make that monumental shift and, and turn him heel... You don't have nearly enough faces. You don't have... You certainly don't have a baby face on his level. The closest guy you would have would be Punk, who you could turn, but he would be gone anyway. Or Sheamus. Or Sheamus. I don't I don't know that Sheamus is on his level. No. I think Punk is the closest... But I mean, like, these are your... The this is your Closer options. guys. Closer options. Honestly, I don't know what, it, what would be next for him. Uh, but as far as the will he, won't he turn... I'm leaning like red herring. I think they were just trying to, to make it a little more interesting because I don't think people, I don't think that they think people bit on the, the redemption storyline. So they wanted mm -hmm. to throw something else in there. Yeah. See, my my issue with the whole redemption uh, storyline that they had is that, you know, yeah, he he lost to The Rock last year at Mania. And, you know, he, you know, lost a match here and there. But he still was as dominant as he has been for however many years now. So it's not like, like if he had gone, if he would have gone out and like lost to Heath Slater, you know, and then, you know, he, he lost to Tensai. He, he beat Brock Lesnar. So, you know, it's like, was his year so incredibly bad? You know, he didn't, he didn't regain the championship, but he still had a lot of big wins. He didn't have that those devastating losses that everyone that you know is trying to play like he had well i will disagree and i will say that i think there's a threshold i don't care once you cross a certain line even if you're having a bad year i don't think that means you you're doing the job for mm -hmm. guys that low on the card i think if anyone had a bad bad year it would have been tensai uh, <laughs> you know yeah but it, a bad year for your, the face of your company. I think it's totally plausible, and actually, what happened? He had big losses to Ziggler. He was the first guy to cash in the the Money in the Bank and, yeah. and lose. Uh, yeah, he may have beat Brock, but he got his ass handed to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't think that, that 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 was whole. I didn't like that whole deal anyway. I mean, you're gonna bring this guy back. He's you know gets the largest pop, and then you put him in a match with Cena, and then Cena basically makes him look like a bitch. I don't think he made him look like and, a bitch. No, nah. he I just mean, got a. It was one of those. I think, he got I a lucky think shot. If you're gonna put bring this guy in like they're bringing Lesnar in to make him this, you know, this beast that he is, then what better thing to do to why can't you put him over one of your biggest stars? No, you're gonna feed him to Triple H like, because he already he he's already known to have one foot out the door in the past, and if you bring him in for a handful of dates. And then he jets before you can put any of your own guys over him. Then you paid him a shit ton of money to well, beat that's your WWE. Though I mean, they're known for that. Yeah, but you know? is it okay? You you book a wrestling company. Would you would you say you got you paid a lot of money to book the 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 top indie dude, and you got your guys and you, you got your top guys and you book the top guys say on the independents and you paid a lot of money to get him in. But he's known to be a flake. He's known to lose interest, and he's known to lose to, to just bail out halfway through. Are you gonna put a, you gonna put him over your top guy, or are you gonna test him to make sure he's there to do business? And even if he leaves after that, you can play that one clip that Cena beat him a hundred times and say, yeah, he might have went elsewhere, but he didn't beat our guy. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess I look at it different just because of of where I stand on on. The wrestling aspect of it you know when i look at shows and and, and, it, and i'm not into like really bringing in 
quote unquote name guys or whatever. I mean, I have in the past and everything. Don't get me wrong, and I've and they've been a pleasure to work with. I've never had a problem with the guys I brought in. No, I was just saying hypothetical. No, I'm I know. Not... But I'm just saying. But if if I knew somebody was a flake or, or didn't do really didn't cooperate, I wouldn't bring him in just for the sake of the fact. I wouldn't bring him into my locker room, and I wouldn't let that morale of my locker room get dropped because of this one person that's here here today to get a paycheck and then be gone tomorrow. So you know, I look at it as you know, like. I look at it this. If I'm going to bring somebody in, no, I'm not like most guys where I'm going to put them over or put the belt on them or whatever because I just think that's stupid. You know, so. You put your guy over. You put your guy over. But right? I would do it in a different way to where everybody could get the rub off of, of off of that one person, you know, whether it be a tag match or whatever it may be, to where you got multiple guys getting the rub off of one thing. And yeah, he might not go over in the match. My guy might go over, but it might not be him getting pinned. It could be the other guy or whoever it may be. But everybody gets the rub and everybody gets a good feel about it. Where in this case, you know, they kind of knew what they had with Lesnar. They knew going into it what they were getting with Lesnar when they brought him back. So it, it's it's a 50-50 shot. And then he just signed another long-term, you know, contract, ext- or I say long-term, another extension to probably go through WrestleMania of next year. Mm-hmm. And so why not build him up and make him this beast and then maybe do something down the line to where – Say Cena does go over on him instead of the first show, first pay per view back. You know, you put Cena over on him, and and I just, I, I just didn't like that. I just didn't like that whole, that whole booking idea of I, WWE. I, I agree with you in theory, and uh, it, but I think from a business aspect on there, now, now they know he's not going anywhere else because he's all his other endeavors. He's pretty much he's cut. He's not going back to the UFC. He's not right. going. He's not going anywhere else. They know he's there to play ball, but now. But they had to test him when he came back because he flaked once before, and he couldn't like bolt on them after they made him a monster killing all their guys. And then he's like, "Okay, I'm bored. Peace out." And then they're like, "Well, he beat everybody in our goddamn company." So <laughs> I, mean, I think, I I think the reason that he it. he left the you know he would, he left last time like he did is because he was burnt out. You know, I mean, you do something for so long, you get burnt out. You're ready to do move on or take a break or whatever. And I think that's why they're giving him like limited as dates of when he can appear or when they're wanting to bring him in because they don't want him to get burnt out and they want to keep the freshness, I guess, of him coming back there. Cause you really, you know, it's, I say you never know when he's going to come back, but of course everybody knows when he comes back cause the dirt sheets are all out there. <laughs> they have like spies in the back when somebody pulls in a car. But anyway, you know, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I just think, you know, I think they could have done it a little different knowing they were really going to try to keep him there for another year or whatever it may be. I think they could have handled it a lot different with Cena and, and Lesnar. But, you know, Cena, I'm kind of like... He hasn't know. lost since. No, he hasn't. And he beat the fuck out of Cena. Cena got a well, lucky yeah, yeah, punch. Yeah. But, you know, as far as Cena goes with this whole deal with The Rock and is it revenge, is it, is it you know, redemption or whatever, nothing ever was said about it. Like, And I'm kind of like with Danny, like, yeah, I can see if he was losing to Heath Slater or Hornswoggle or whoever it may be. <laughs> you know, then he's like having a bad year, but he really didn't have that bad of a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, he he finally beat Punk. You know, he finally got that that well, edge that was, over Punk that was this year. Right. So that's that's but the I mean, redeeming like, quality of this he, year. You know, and they try to make you know with this whole personal life, they kind of threw in the personal life aspect mm-hmm. of it to make it seem like because you lost to The Rock. I had all to your cheat person, on my wife. Yeah, all your personal problems have <laughs> happened because you lost to The Rock. I don't think that was really the case there. But anyway, uh, I just, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, everybody last year said that, you know, Cena handed Rock his promos and he just looked better in, in the long. This year, I think it's totally different. I think The Rock mm. looked way better on his promos. Um, and I think The Rock is more, I, I'm going to say more, He's got. He's always got that comedy air on him, yeah. but he's more serious about the way he's when he's been in the ring with with Cena. You know, when they're Q and A's or their old promos or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I think the Rock's. You know, he looks strong. They're building the Rock stronger than they are Cena to me at this point. And you know, that you know we in the wrestle business always say the fans kind of decided your fate. Mm-hmm. And if you got fans chanting "boring" this close to WrestleMania. That's 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 pretty hard to swallow. Yeah, but that cra- that was a, that was a shithead crowd though. I don't know them, them North crowds, man. They're they're smart mark, so they're they're all about you know when you especially when you go to Philly, New York, that area up there, you know it's you got to really do something to impress them, or they're just gonna call you out on anything, really. Mm. 
But, you know, the fans, I've always heard the fans make you or break you. And, you know, uh, it's kind of like when they tried to turn in Austin Hill that time with WCW. It never worked. Yeah. The crowd still cheered him, even though he was on the bad guys, uh, you know, yep. with, with WCW. But the crowd still cheered him, and it didn't work. And I think, you know, sometimes you got to listen to the people. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, you know, what I say the heel turn would work with Cena, probably not. I think people are just tired of seeing him. Right now, I, don't I, think think so. I think people are burned out on him. Is what it is. Even I think the that's booze, why it don't really affect John Cena. That still helps, you know. Well, now he he, he acknowledges it now, so now it's just part of his his promos. Yeah, yeah, I got people that hate me, and I got people that love me. We are in a house divided. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he turns hill and like. I think a crowd, whole new crowd. The crowd just with flops. Him. The kids start booing him, and the people <laughs> then the people who are booing him are gonna cheer him. I'm serious. The, his 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 segmented audience is just if he turns heel, they're gonna flip flop. The kids yeah. will start booing him because he's a bad guy, and the people who think it's cool to cheer for the bad guys are gonna cheer because he's a bad guy. And the and think of how many like you know they're always worried about oh how much merch are they gonna are they gonna push if they were right. to, if they were to turn him. They have those let's go Cena Cena suck shirts. Think right. of how many people are gonna are gonna purchase those. Not you very know. many because you can get those dirt cheap on the shop for. Well, for, <laughs> you know, you can. Well, they'll come up with something new that you can get. Yeah, you it's know, not dirt cheap. Outside. Only assholes wear those shirts. <laughs> well, you know <laughs> that guy in the audience. Yeah, yeah, we read dirt sheets, but uh, you know, it's uh, I you know, I think a lot of the the fans' problems with Cena is that it's been the same gimmick the same character for about 10 years now nine nine or 10 years now so i think if they were to actually switch him it would give him a fresher feel and i think a lot of more a lot more people would be okay with i mean i didn't see cena when he first came in but i mean did he do the whole rap gimmick when he first came in and now he's still doing it well i say he's not really doing the rap gimmick but he still looks like he's when he first came in the you know the thug look Thug mm-hmm. life of of a white guy, but word life, um, yeah, word life. You know, I just I don't know. It's like kind of once once you get stuck in 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 a gimmick like that, mm-hmm. you kind of almost have to stay with it. I mean, or no. the, I no. mean, you know, I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, you know, probably the best heel turn it would probably was Hogan. You know, mm-hmm. when Hogan finally turned heel, but. Hogan really didn't. I mean, that, the gimmick really wasn't. He still pretty much did the same thing. He was just wore black and white instead of and colored red his and beard. Yeah, and he colored his beard, and he was Hollywood instead of you know. But I mean, it was the same. Everything was the same except for the look. I don't know. But what, he had, but he had more, a little more intensity. Yeah, he was more you know, intense. Exactly. But, but I mean, you've seen Cena be intense as a babyface. How much more intensity can you get out of a person as a heel? Here's here's what he could do. He can come out to the ring if they were to switch him over to heel. Come out and say, you know, you people know what I can do when I'm fighting for you. Just think of what I can do when I'm fighting for me. You know, like you've seen what I've done to, you know, insert wrestler and insert wrestler and insert wrestler, you know, whenever I'm looking out for what the fans think, what the little kids think. You know, just think of how devastating, what how destructive I could be, you know, if I if I don't care, if I just if I'm out there for, for me. You know, not necessarily that they could go that I'm selfish. I'm thinking about right. me because you know he's still going to be that guy. You know, but his persona will just switch a little bit. It would just it would just be something fresher. That's that's what I want. Yeah, but then it, but it, you got to look at if it doesn't work, then you got to switch him back because it's not working with their wanting, and then, mm. you know the crowd's going to be the determinant factor on that aspect of it. No matter unless he just walks up and spits in somebody's face. Then I can see it possibly getting a, the full turn that they're wanting. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how good it's really going to work, being that he's been put this, someone in a hospital. This guy for ten years or so. Sheamus, when he was in ECW, you know, I mean, it's I don't that that's kind of a hard one with Cena, especially with wrestling is that you know with the way wrestling is in this this day and age right now. Yeah, you know, it'd be different if it was the at now. You know, he kind of made a point on that Q and A that he he could survive in the Attitude Era. Mm. I really don't say I don't think he would have survived in the attitude era. I think that was totally different and mm. probably one of to me one of the best eras, you know, and I don't like to say eras, but best times of wrestling. Of course you had to you have to change with time and as time goes. Yeah. With anything. And I just don't think Cena would have fit in in that time, to be honest. I mean, that was that I was think a little bit more clickish back then and, and everybody was more, you know, more of a close knit deal and 
I just don't. I think he'd have got lost in the system back then. Mm. I don't think so. I think he fit in just fine in the Attitude Era. People look at the Attitude Era with rose tinted glasses. It wasn't as awesome as you remember it being. Trust me, I've watched. I've rewatched some of it recently. But I thought it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying people are like <laughs> shit. On it. People look at that as the absolute like pinnacle. Like it can't be touched. And like you know, a lot of that shit was just as shitty as some of the shit that is now. They just cussed a lot more, and, and they bled hit people, and in the head hit people on the head. Well, yeah, that was cool. I mean, like, <laughs> okay, we talked a lot about the like. Honestly, I, I don't think there is a full turn for Cena. I think you flop, you turn Cena, the fans just flip flop. You got the people who were cheering booing, people who were booing cheering. Uh, we talked a lot about like, could it happen? What would happen if it did happen? Let's just like round table saw go around do you think they're going to turn him at mania i'm going to say it was a red herring i'm going to say no they're not going to turn him all right tyler uh, i'm going to say no i just i just don't see it i'm going to say no at mania but i could see it post well i'm not saying this is an indefinite answer we're talking about wrestlemania right now right i'm going to say for the time being once wrestlemania is over he's still going to be the quote unquote good guy Although there could be shades of it for later on, if they decided to pull the trigger, I don't. I don't see it. No, I don't see him turning. Okay, the especially not at Mania. Never know. Shock the world. No, I mean, I, I don't, don't think know. it's a shock. I think if but, people expect it, like I think people are expecting it. It's just they don't know when it's gonna. Like they don't know when to expect that. Yeah. To happen. But if they did, think if they did, I think of. I, Think of how the rating system would be that following Monday. Right. And then that's kind of like, it's like, I don't know how many of y'all went to WrestleMania 17 in Houston besides me. But anyway, it was kind of like when they did with uh, like Austin or uh, when it was Austin and The Rock, like after the mm -hmm. match, uh, was it Austin, I think? Shook hands with McMahon. Shook hands. And yeah, and kind of made that turn. Everybody was all pissed. Mm -hmm. That'd kind of be the only way that I could see it happening at Mania is like, let The Rock go over, but... Yet, you know, he, he, you know, something, there's got to be some type of that's, sw that's swerve thing, or something, but don't put him for God's sake. And I've read it. He aligns God, himself with John Laurinaitis. Well, that'd be okay. Just as long as it's not the shield. The shield awesome. is perfectly fine with the three of them. Power. I kind of miss Big Johnny. Uh, <laughs> he came, th did you see him come back? He was there yeah, uh, last was on Friday Smackdown. on SmackDown. Yeah, he was there. Uh, but that's the thing you talk about Austin and Rock. Austin had Rock and Rock had Austin. You, f you don't have an equal for Cena right now. Nobody who, they, no matter who they tried, not Orton, not Shane. I think Orton could do it. I don't think so. He's a I mean, Orton's shit. about ready. <laughs> or Orton's about ready for a heel turn, so I can see Orton going back and 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 being that that top heel to go against Cena. Right I don't now. think he's. I don't think he's even near Cena. It would level. be a renewed re rivalry. Cena doesn't have. A, they, Cena doesn't have. Right back. All the all the super <laughs> top guys throughout <laughs> history had an, an equal but opposite guy. Hmm. You don't have that with Cena, partially because it's partially their own fault because they haven't, I don't think, tried hard enough, but yeah. uh, or realized when one wasn't working and, and and tried a different guy. But there is no there is no other guy for Cena to, to turn with. You know? But knowing knowing the WWE, just the way that their storylines go, sometimes if they were to switch Cena, I would almost be willing to bet money that his first first big challenge would be against Ryback. Because the storyline set, oh, you know, Cena cost Ryback his WrestleMania championship match, or I don't think so. No, okay. if, they, if they flip Cena, they got to turn Punk face because he's the closest thing they have to Cena's level. Yeah, but nobody wants to see Punk not on, Cena again, though. I wouldn't mind. They put on I mean, some. They put on some. <laughs> but I mean, solid we've matches. seen it for like a half a year. It seems like, you know, and I mean, every time for that half a year or longer, there's only been a few. At least a few matches, in my opinion, that were top notch between them two. Every fucking time, they they can't do any wrong in my eyes. I don't know ring. about every time. I think but. every match, rewatch their feud. Every pay per view match they've had has been stellar. And, and, that's, good job. And, and I'm just saying, Punk is the closest they have to Cena level, and he's not Cena level. He's not. Mm -mm. You, can, I mean, I like Punk a lot too, and people will probably get pissed off to hear that. It's the truth. He's not Cena level. Yeah, it's just. I mean, he's, those... he's as talented. I'm just saying he, but he hasn't been given enough to be viewed on the same level by the general audience. Right. Tyler, what are your thoughts on all this? Okay, Mysterio's gone. You yeah. Know. What about Mysterio? Would couldn't do it. No. There's no way. Yeah. Well, that's true. Not show. 
with shows. Yeah. yeah. There's there's no one. They don't have anybody. I mean, they need fresh faces. Yeah. It's time to start pulling people but out of can't. development. I'm, That's uh, what they need to do is bring somebody out of development and put the shock and awe value on something. Mm. I mean, totally shock the world by somebody. I, mean, I don't even know who the hell's down there, but let's just say Billy Joe Bob or whatever comes out of <laughs> development. You know, you got the big Chris Zero, BJB, BJB. You know, and then just give it, give everybody that. Holy crap, what the hell just happened? Oh, like, fuck, Generico is like the ultimate baby face. Bring up Generico. <laughs> oh, Sammy Sane. Sane. What's his name? Sammy, Sammy Sane. S- S- it's not Sane, it's something like that. No, it's, it's, it's S-A-N-E, S-A-N-E, Sane, ain't it? I don't think so. It's, it's something Sane. like that. It's is that Sane? I don't, yeah, I don't it's, know. It's Dude, spelled you, weird. It's you, like French You knew Canadian the guy's name. I'm just well, I mean, that's... <laughs> it's not doing the Sammy Sane or something weird like that. They're not doing the Generico gimmick. No, they made him take off the mask. Sad time. But they could always put it back on him before he gets called up. I mean, hell, if you think about it, that's a marketing tool. They're, they're all not. about if he's if they're he all were about pushing to... merch and you man, you put a guy in a mask well, and you send more masks. They're also about creating their own. Yeah. Well, that's true. He could just come he out as a bad agent. The generic. Yeah. He just had a bad agent. We may maybe maybe we want to move on. We spent a lot of time on this. Okay, so moving on in back over to Raw, we got to see Seamus Horton and Show defeat 3MB. Shield cut Shocker. the promo saying, "Believe in the Shield." Next up, we got to see Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. Um, that was a good match. Yeah, it was a pretty good match. You know, these guys, you know, when they when they face off against one another, they they put on some some pretty good uh, pretty right. good shows. Um, you know, Big E made his presence known. Kane was there. Um, Big E actually attacked Kane after the match, um, and Ziggler ended up getting the victory. Oh, you were talking about how you don't like his finisher. I don't. I don't like Biggie Langston's uh, finisher. I mean, like I understand that it's you know what what some people are saying. It's it's meant for the for the lower back and maybe like the rib cage area, but it, it just doesn't seem that impactful to me because I don't know. It just. I'm gonna disagree. I think it looks really cool, and yeah. uh, I think it looks he's better than fu- the AA. he's strong as <laughs> shit, obviously. Yeah. And let me be. Let me hurt your back and your uh and your your midsection. Well, my a lot. back's already hurt. And let's see if you can kick out of my pinfall. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Lift me up over your shoulder right now. Do it. I'm a big man. I don't get, think. Get the towel. T- okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll save it for uh, for after WrestleMania. So, uh, oh, you made yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll do it later. Uh, so, yeah. So, Ziggler ends up defeating Daniel Bryan to get ready for uh, for their match at WrestleMania. Uh, next up, we got to see Shawn Michaels come out. And, you know, they... Doug, Doug, you said it best. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H are the only two friends out there who <laughs> their friendship is based on doubting one another. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, dude, you're my best friend, but I don't, I don't think, think you're gonna do it. I don't think you're gonna, gonna, gonna do it. You know, I love you like a brother, but I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H, you know. Also, not only are they like the most dysfunctional friends ever, <laughs> but. They they brothers. can't have a storyline without each other in it. Like no. there's no fucking no. reason for no. Sean to be there. No, no. Uh, they they said, he's going to be in the corner for WrestleMania. Yeah, Shawn Michaels Triple is going to be in the corner of Triple H. He went there for but SummerSlam. See, they're, they're bringing in stars to help Triple H get over. But for his... that's the problem. He's not going to get over. <laughs> and why no, are you no, going to no, bring no, in no. Sean? Triple, I mean, no, Triple H always goes over. He has to get over. He has to. He has to get over. He has to get over. It's time to move on. It's time, time to play the game. Triple H. It's time to pass the torch there, Chief. Time to hand me my water. Just do like your do like your best friend and just retire. <laughs> Never. <laughs> just come back for oh, you don't have anybody else. So it looks like he won't be coming back. It's gonna be you can't doubt Triple anybody H else. versus Brock Lesnar three at the next WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. At SummerSlam. This time you broke my arm, so I'm breaking your leg. Part two. Part three. So, uh, yeah. Anything else to take from there? Let, uh, Heyman on the mic was pretty good for that. You know, Heyman's saying? always good on the mic. Oh, yeah. That's true. Can we say, okay. Have you seen the Paul Heyman shirt? <clears throat> the new I'm a Paul Heyman guy shirt? Yes, with like the... The Godfather. String, yeah, like, I like that. Really cool shirt. Awesome design. It's like the Paul Heyman guy thing is like... is like, It's It's like the Godfather logo. Yeah. He's the perfect cool man. shirt. Would totally buy it. On the back has the dumbest like hashtag. Too extreme for WWE. 
quit putting stupid fucking sayings <laughs> on your t-shirts. I will buy a lot of your t-shirts if you quit putting stupid t-shirts. New primetime player shirt, fucking awesome looking, cool design on the front, nice color scheme. It's like the it's like Titus O'Neil's uh, whistle mm-hmm. with uh, Darren Young's pick like combined. On the back it says like something stupid like know your worth. Put millions of dollars on it, dumb fuck. They say <laughs> millions of dollars. No, you're worth. No, you're worth. No, you're worth. <laughs> I, I swear to God, yeah. I would buy the the primetime player shirt if they would just put. Millions it, of it's dollars. not. It's not just no, you're. It's like they hashtag millions of dollars or anything. It's too much bullshit. Yeah. Quit putting stupid sayings on your t-shirt. Just have a cool graphic with no a more cool, hashtags with a cool color scheme and no hashtags on t-shirts at all. Well, well, I blame Twitter. I would buy the Rufus Pancake Patterson t-shirt. <laughs> And why is that? Because it's awesome. Oh. I thought you were going to say because it flattens other shirts. Flattens, flattens those fools. So, yeah. So, next up, we got to see uh, Wade Barrett defeat uh, Zach Ryder with Miz on commentary. I made that picture Ryan made of you as, as Rufus, my uh, back thing on Facebook. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Did you see that, Curtis? The uh, I think I did see that. Yeah? Yeah, I think I did I see that. Him. I think he I seen flat- that. He flattens those fools. The other day or something. So, next up, we got to see uh, the return of Santino Morella, but he got it to be up in a matchup against uh, Mark Henry. Yeah, entering the House of Pain. I love Santino's reaction because that's sort of the reaction I would have if I found out I was going up against Mark Henry, where he's basically about to start, you know, breaking down and crying. Uh, loved his work in the ring where uh, he tried to stop Mark Henry. He was like, wait, 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 wait. You know what I have in my pocket. You know what I have. Don't make me get it. Okay, you're going to make me get it. Okay, there we go. So, and then Henry just destroys him anyway. So, uh, Henry gets the win. Doug, would you like to say anything about Mark Henry before we uh, move I on? love him. He's awesome. Okay. Because uh, well, I know last week I cut you off. And... I know. Well, last week I did. I, I remember having a point about the actual <laughs> match other than just expressing my adoration for Mark Henry. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think I have one this week. Although, yeah. wait, Ryback comes out afterwards. Yes. Uh, no contact clause in the contract, apparently. Use a Santino. Use a Santino. Yeah. <coughs> Throw, bumps, him, bumps Henry off the apron, and then did you guys Gorilla catch, presses uh, him off. Did you guys catch the weightlifting competition on Not This Yes, I did. I saw, the, I saw the clips of it, yeah. It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. He, yeah. like, choked them out with the, the bar. Yeah. I was I was watching it the whole time, and, you know, as they were, as they were pushing up the bar, I'm like, Where's the the safety lock that they have that they you know they put on the uh, the edge of the bars to keep the weights from falling off? And then whenever they yeah, did that, I noticed that too. then when they did that scene, it was like, oh okay, well it's a way for him to get out. But, but God, d- dude, but I mean, like I've never seen somebody lift that much weight that fast. That fast, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like literally, like Mark Henry looked like he was throwing it up and catching it because <laughs> <laughs> it was like, <laughs> and even with with Ryback, like I mean, it was just it was it was crazy. How much was it? Two two twenty five. Twenty five. And they yeah. did it like what, like fifty three times? Yeah, the three records times. like supposedly the the records fifty one at that weight. And yeah, I don't know if that's a shoot or not. Oh, yeah, really. I don't know if that's a legit record, but I'm just saying. But goddamn, that was, like Curtis said, like, they were, like, pumping. <laughs> I don't know if I could get that off me, like, just save my life right now. But <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, just kill me, whatever, can't do it. Nice life, good times. I'm weak. I'm weak, too. So, uh, next up, we got to see Alberto Del Rio go up against Zeb Coulter uh, with Jack Swagger in his corner. Uh, this match didn't really go anywhere. Uh, except for Swagger attacking Ricardo. And there's rumor going around that Ricardo kind of did a shoot tweet saying, you know, he's pissed. Yeah, he wasn't too he wasn't too thrilled about that. He's like, okay, you seriously hurt me that time. When you threw me off, I, you know, had like numbing in my body or something from the fall or something. Yeah. It's like, it like, now it's getting kind of personal as far as that. But, you know, that could be just taken as working it into the into the feud. Uh, but Swagger and Zeb Coulter decide to attack Del Rio with uh, the crutches of Ricardo Rodriguez. And picture, man, man that was vicious. It was pretty bad. A lot of lashes left on Del Rio's back, yeah. uh, posted on his Twitter account. So uh, show it to any of your fans, uh, any of your friends who are like, oh, wrestling's fake. And just show it to the show on that. Yeah, if you have fans as well, you know, ceiling fans or small air conditioning units, that works too. Uh, next up, we got to see a rock promo. Basically, where he talks about, you know, he's still going to be the champion after WrestleMania. Cena's still going to be eating Fruity Pebbles and so on and so forth. Um, you know, kind of kind of generic. I thought it was odd that they used it to start the third hour because normally they have uh, The Rock close out the show. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they went 
with that time frame uh, where they did. Uh, next up, got to see a really great showing from uh, Chris Jericho and Antonio Cesaro. Um, you know, Fandango, Fandango, however you want to say it. Uh, he came out. I don't like that again. gimmick. I like that gimmick. Fun. No, you're not. I wanted you to make the arms again when you were saying Fandango. <laughs> With the arms included. So, uh, but yeah, he came out and was uh, judging Chris Jericho's moves. Holding up three out of ten, four out of ten. Fandango is not impressed. No. Um, but the match overall was really solid. Uh, Jericho ends up getting the win. Via submission I would like to on see more between them. That was their first encounter. Or first between uh, Cesaro yeah, and Jericho. Cesaro's had a lot of good matches with a lot of people. Like, Cesaro always has really good everybody. matches. You know, like, uh, who was it? Great Khali? No. <laughs> Ryback. Uh, Ryback was a good one. Uh, yeah, uh, there was another one I've seen on main event. Uh, him and Orton had a really good solid one on main event one time. Um, it just seems like he, he, he's, he clicks with a lot of the guys there. You know that he's willing to work that that style or whatever. I mean, minus Kali because he can't. He can really <laughs> walk. It looks like he's about to fall over. But Buh. you know, <laughs> Buh. I mean, I just. I, I mean, yeah, it's impressive when you can pick somebody up like that and and hit your finisher on them, and then mm-hmm. it's all pure strength. You yeah. know, with Cesaro, and you know, it, to me, he seems like he's bigger or stronger than like Mark Henry or pound for pound, you know, or, or Ryback or whatever. But yeah, Cesaro, man, he's having really great matches. I like to see, I hope they do something really good with that guy. Um, man, he could just be phenomenal with some of those guys there. Mm-hmm. I agree. What about you, Doug? I know a lot of people are pissed that he's not announced for the card. Yeah. Uh, that's not to say he won't get thrown on. I I think that is not take out a, take out the Diddy concert well, and I, throw in Cesaro. Look, if we're gonna be honest, Diddy is like the least sucky musical guest they've had oh, yeah. in like years. <laughs> had Motorhead Kid was Rock. bad we, when I was there one year. We had Kid Rock, and that was we had Motorhead. We had mo- I seen Motorhead at seventeen, and that was horrible. I'll take Diddy over Kid Rock. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In recent years, he's like the least sucky musical guest they've had. So I'm not even gonna. But I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Uh, completely out of the question he'll sneak on the card in some way shape or form yeah. uh but if if i have to pick between him not being on the card or him getting thrown something stupid or having to take a big loss at his first mandy or something like that you know what i'll i can wait till next year to where mm. he's I, well I, established i can guarantee next year i'll be at a lot better position on the card uh he'll probably be doing a lot something a lot more awesome next year and you can't you can't deny the guy. He's that fucking good. He's the best in ring guy they've had since he's been there consistently. Uh, doesn't matter who's in the ring with him. Yeah. Uh, I can wait if it's between him doing something shitty and and uneventful and not being on the card. Don't put him on the card. I can mm. wait till next year. I'll agree with you on that one because because you don't want to have him, you know, lose a four minute match to a returning Rey Mysterio or even Sin Car or something like that because that would just be just awful because he's got a it's obvious he has a bright future don't yeah. tarnish his first mania with something whack yeah just to get him on the card whack 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 wiggity whack. whack so there you go uh the main event second week in a row we had uh divas close out uh raw we got to see the bella twins defeat the funkadactyls um so that's pretty much how they closed out the action uh the final segment was the now infamous cm punk beating down the Undertaker pouring ashes over Taker, sand. huh? I think that was sand. Yeah, it looks. It looked like sand. Looked like playground sand. Something like that, but no way, yeah. dude. It was legit ashes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, but yeah, you know, sparking a lot of controversy. A lot of people. Somebody's grandpa uh, was in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, with uh, Paul Bear's son. Yeah. Well, he uh, but he came out and made a statement on that, though, didn't he? Yeah. He's he. Uh, Paul Bearer's son originally said, "I don't know what to, I don't know what to say." Uh, you know, I gave him the go ahead, and from what they, from what they explained to me, but I don't know what to, what to say about it. But he also released a, a further statement saying that it was, it was okay. Yeah. Uh, so he, you know, he wasn't offended. Or I don't think it was that tasteless, really. I mean, no, I kind of liked it, really. I mean, that to me, that really sealed the deal between Punk and Taker. I mean, it's yeah, it's a lot personal now than it is than it was just like 
you know, like Taker said, I don't care about the streak. You know, this mm-hmm. is kind of personal. Like, it's not a word. You know, this year it's not about the streak. It's 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 a it just happened to fall with the death of of uh, Paul Bear and with Mania coming up. I mean, and they really used that. And I think that I thought the whole the whole program uh, on Monday was was great with that. Yeah, I did not have a problem with it at all. Like, I thought that was. And, I, and honestly, I don't think Paul Bear and I don't know the man, but a lot of I don't, people I don't were think saying he, he had a problem with it. it either. Yeah, I mean, I think he would have been okay with that idea, to be yeah. perfectly honest. And uh, and I actually got into a conversation with someone uh, during, uh, about that segment. Uh, and to my recollection, wasn't it supposed to be the Undertaker's parents' ashes that were in that urn? I think and that's, that's what, who. I that's think that's to originally that was the gist of the urn, but then yeah. it just kind of like. Faded away over the years. And they put the urn. light bulb inside of it. Yeah, they they did a lot of really <laughs> cool effects, and I was thinking maybe they were going to do some really cool stuff with Punk having it, like it would heat up all of a sudden, or you know, just something really cool to symbolize that he still there's power still in the urn. But yeah, they you know, oh, uh, they didn't really do it like that. But hey, I still like the whole segment with Punk and Taker mm-hmm. at Mania. I think it was uh, pretty well done. Uh, I think I, I I like that that. Taker being the, he's like, you know, I'm not that stupid. I've been through this before. Yeah. First of all, Paul Heyman made a really awesome Paul Bear. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I forgot about that. Good point, uh, or he, the Penguin from Batman Returns. And uh, I like I like pot. Taker being smarter than that, stopping before he gets to Heyman and saying, okay, one of these druids is going to attack me. One but, of these things is not like, yeah. But then he makes the wrong call, right? He yeah. picks the wrong guy and Punk makes him pay for it. Uh, as far as the urn stuff, uh, I think we've all said a number of times uh, there's nothing really off limits in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, about the a lot of people are still on the this is a disrespectful thing. Look, anybody involved in this angle has enough power to say no. I'm not doing it. I don't yeah. think it's in good taste. Especially Ta- with Taker being Taker yeah. in this angle. Yeah. Taker doesn't have to do a goddamn thing. He doesn't <laughs> no. do. He's just like, no, we're not doing yeah, that. Exactly. You put the light bulb in he's, it or he's something. He's got more we'll power than, than most guys there. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one and, day a year. Exactly. <laughs> I mean. And look, look. As far as the kids go, okay, I didn't read the revised statement that uh, you were talking about, mm-hmm. like a second one, but I read the initial where it was like, uh, the guys were like, I'm speechless. Uh, both kids, there was a quote from each kid. Apparently, it was posted on Facebook. Both of his sons that said, I, I, I don't know what to say about this. This isn't what was pitched to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what to say. Or the, it, You can't really, It's you can't read into text like because text doesn't, there's a lot of stuff you can't get out of text. Yeah, you can't you can't read emotion. Uh, yeah, you can't read emotion on text. Good point. Uh, I mean, good. That's what I was just trying to say. But uh, look, it did kind of feel like they were saying like, "Well, we didn't know it was going to go this far or whatever." But look, if you sign off, if you say if Vince comes to you and you give him your blessing to fuck around with earn stuff, like. Even if, I don't see how you can go from oh it's okay for him to drop and kick the urn around, but if he dumps the ashes out, that's where the line is crossed. I think that's a weird place to draw a line. I think like you're just getting a, a little bit melodramatic all of a mm-hmm. sudden. Look, I lost my dad. You know, it's, it's been a few years ago now, but I know that if someone came to me and wanted to do an angle about my dad, and if I was if I crossed the line and said, "Yeah, go for it, mm-hmm. kick the urn around, drop it, uh, insult him, mock him." And then, I, then I'm saying, hey, I'm game for it. It's okay. He would have been fine with it. I'm fine with it. I don't draw the line after that. Yeah. You you don't get sensitive after you say, yeah, go ahead, kick his urn around, yeah. mock his voice. You know. Mm-hmm. And now I'm gonna get sensitive. That really just rubbed me the kind of the wrong way. I was like, that's a weird place to draw the line. Yeah. I don't know. And well, here's here's the uh... if it's not what was presented to you, if you're gonna say. I'm okay with 90% of the stuff that happened, but this 10% cross line, I think that's a weird, really weird way to, to go about it. Yeah. Well, I, I pulled up the uh, the actual message, uh, the second message, so, so you could hear and we'll get your take on it. It says, quote, Hey, I woke up in time to watch the tail end of the show. What you explained would happen happened, which is fine. Uh, just it was a little difficult to watch and play out. I put a message on Facebook last night saying that we approved it, but it wasn't what I envisioned. Uh, that I don't that I didn't have anything to say well woke up this morning uh, and that quote is being used all over media outlets for the record I was fine with it was hard to watch but you are professionals and I trust 
Yeah, I mean, that's fine. So. Like, see, I read the first one where it's, it, again, you can't read emotion in text, but it felt like they were saying, okay, they, they told me one thing and, and they did another thing. Yeah. And well, that's where I was like, well, that's a weird place. Well, you, to, especially to in like, in, with this situation here, I mean, you know, you lose your dad and then they're going to run with this angle and yeah. you sign off on it. And, or you, I say you sign off, you, you give the blessing for it. And then you make a statement like that. Do you not expect it to just blow up out of proportion overnight? Right, right. I mean, it's the freaking internet, yeah. for God's sakes. I mean, that's what this shit is. I mean, yeah. you know, everything blows up out of proportion. So you, you know, he kind of like talking. bit himself in the foot on that because it's like you put it out there and then you're going to try to take it back. Well, it's already been said and done and now it's already been all over media outlets and, and dirt, yeah. you know, all the dirt sheets and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it's kind of back on, on him. He kind of had to know that people were going to be yeah. checking in and be like, oh, what did you think? What did you think? Is that right. is that okay? Was that, you know, over the line? But, you know, like you said, if if they if he gave the blessing, then there's not really much that, you know, pro wrestling won't won't do. Right. So, you know, what was it? Katie Vick or whatever? Just yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, You're going to go like, back to Katie Vick. I mean, hey, man. Now. You know, if you got to use a prime yeah. example of something that shows how far, yeah, or how, how far, how far will someone go we're, to we're, get people talking? So there you go. But that's how we closed out Raw. Um, and we'll just go ahead and jump on into our uh, WrestleMania 29 predictions because uh, I haven't seen any of the uh, the results for for SmackDown, but you know, I'm sure it'll just be an okay show. Leading they are not there. taping SmackDown this week. They're going to do like oh. what they did last oh, year. Oh yeah, okay. With a, with a, hey, we're here live at Access. Okay, cool. And sort of just give you a rundown. So, there, well, there you go. So uh, so that's how we lead into WrestleMania 29. We'll start with the with the pre-show, obviously. Uh, it's actually going to be an hour long, um, I guess, building up the actual show. But there's going to be a match uh, that has moved into it. There's ten matches in all. Uh, but this, this one brings it down to nine uh, since they moved it to the, the pre-show. It's going to be Miz versus Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental Championship. So this one's, you know, it hasn't had a whole lot of uh, build-up. It's kind of just one of those sort of thrown-together matches, but they have, you know... Confrontations. Yeah, they've had a few confrontations, a few one-on-one, face-to-face, whatever. Whatever happened, and, and maybe I just I didn't see it, but whatever happened with the Bo Dallas-Wade Barrett deal, did that just die? It completely just fizzled away. Dropped like the last it. time we saw it. Barrett attacked Bo Dallas backstage at SmackDown. That, that was, was it? it. That was it. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure I, like, I didn't miss something because I was like, I don't get this, but all right. I'll and that would have been a perfect build for, yeah. for Bo yeah. Dallas and Wade Barrett. Then they did Seamus, Wade Barrett, and then they dropped that. Now it's like they didn't know what to do with Wade Barrett, it sounds like. Pretty or, much. Or, you know, they were trying to fix. I mean, wh- how can you really make a glorified Hollywood star so happy? Right. Like, True. Know, give True. them. Give him the pre-show on YouTube. So there you go. So who are you guys going to go with between Miz and Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental Championship? We'll start with you, Tyler. It's really like I don't know and kind of like I don't care. But yeah. I know that sounds bad. That sounds horrible. But I, I'm i just going to stick with Barrett. Wade Barrett. I really don't have a reason, to be honest Barrett. with you. Barrett. Okay. So for no reasons given, Tyler's going with Wade Barrett. I don't. <laughs> like that, I have no reason. Like, why would you keep on him or the Miz, Wade Barrett? I don't okay. Know. How about you, Curtis? Um, you know, it's it's kind of a sad day, really. Um, I mean, to me, the Intercontinental Championship's been around for so long, and mm-hmm. now it's reduced to a freaking pre-show. Are you kidding me? But anyway, going <laughs> on with that, I digress. Um, kind of like Tyler, I really could care less. On this match, it's there really wasn't that much build. Maybe two weeks into build, uh, uh, if I had to go, I'm a, I'll just flip I'll a go, coin. I'll, yeah, I'll flip <laughs> a coin. I'm and and I'll just go with the Miz on this one. Miz, okay. How about you, Doug? Uh, well, seems like they've got a boner for the Miz again. Uh, <laughs> they try, they turned him face, <sighs> they turned him face. They gave him flair. They mm-hmm. gave him the figure four. Gave him I, a movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the Miz takes it here. I'm going okay. with the Miz. It's boner time. I'm gonna go with the Miz as well. Um, you know, they've been sending him on a lot of. Uh, you know, he he's the guy who goes out and does a lot of the press. So it's always gonna look a little flashier with him carrying around a belt. 
you know, so and they just they have not had anything for Wade Barrett. So I'm gonna go with Miz to to get the Intercontinental Championship on that one. So um, since Tyler, since Tyler, you were the odd man out on that one, we'll let you pick the uh, the next matchup. Who are you gonna go with? Fandango versus Chris Jericho. Who? Fun. Dong, go, go, go. You don't want to go for tons of funk first? <laughs> hey, Fandango. <laughs> so, Fandango versus, uh, oh, wait, should I do the arm? Fandango. So, Fandango versus Chris Jericho. So, this will be our first uh, uh, WrestleMania rookie mm-hmm. to, to appear out of, like, eight or so. Eight, maybe nine. So, who are you going to go with between Fandango and Chris Jericho? Fandango. Yeah. yeah. Give him, a, you know, a big win, mm-hmm. WrestleMania, you know. And Chris Jericho is really good about, you know, coming in. His his name is already, you know, made. He doesn't have to be there. He's he's done his job. He likes. He just loves to wrestle, mm-hmm. and he's helping the younger guys get out. You know, get get their names up there. He helped with uh, with Dolph Ziggler, and uh, you know, CM Punk last year. Yeah. So, um, okay, so you're going with Fandango, yes. Fandinger. Okay. How about you, Curtis? Uh, I'm going to go with fun, fan, Fandango or whatever. whatever you <laughs> Johnny it. Curtis. Fandango. Um, you know, I just think it's funny, like, I guess people ain't that smart or they don't know who he is or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's fine. I mean, if you go watch him, you know, at NXT or, yeah. you know, he can, he's not, he's really not that bad of a worker. But anyway, I'm going to go with, uh, with Fandango. Uh, I think Chris Jericho, he knows his time's up. He's just there to help make the next guy no, push to that next best. level and and uh so like tyler said i think you know i think it's it's big big opportunity to make a name and um i, I see it happening i go with uh, the rook for the win okay i'll agree with y'all and uh and pick fandango to defeat chris jericho how about you uh doug uh i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna make it unanimous and go with fandango all right there you go so uh so put your money on Fandango to uh, to pick up on that one, uh, Curtis. What? It was unanimous. We all picked him. Um, so Curtis, we'll let you pick up the uh, the next match. What would? Which one would you like us to discuss? Uh, let's go with uh, Tons of Funk uh, versus Road and Scholars and the Bella Twins. Tons the- of Funk and the Funkadactyls. Oh, yeah. and the Funkadactyls. I'm sorry, I forgot about it's this. It's time to get funky. Uh, uh, sweet so, tea. So tons of funk and the Funkadactyls versus Road Scholars and the Bellas. Who are you gonna go with? Because they don't, they haven't had much of a build. Yeah, on this they haven't. One, and you know. it looks like you know the way it's been going. Uh, you know, with the, I think last Friday they had the funk or one of the Funkadactyls or whatever face one of the Bellas. The Bellas mm. went over. Bellas went over on Raw. So I'm gonna give the win to Tons of Funk. Funky. Okay. How about you, Tyler? I'm gonna go with uh, Tons of Funk. Because okay. I feel like, I don't know. It feels like they're giving more to tons of <laughs> tons of funk. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, everyone's you know seems to be behind them and stuff, and everyone now likes uh, Tensai, Sweet Tea, all that stuff. And yeah, I don't know. They haven't really done too he much. He does the with, shovel with road shovel. scholars. They broke them up and put them back together just for this. So I don't know. Pretty much. Uh, tons of tons of funk. I think okay. what I've been really impressed with the Funkadactyls, like, you know, I mean they've been like. The, with the Bellas, they've had really good chemistry in the ring, so it's. Yeah. I thought that was pretty good. And it's rare that you see that with women wrestling today, but uh, it, yeah, I meant to say that earlier. Well, maybe we'll, about it. maybe we'll see a, a decent showing from them as well. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. There you go. All right, Doug. Who did everyone already? Did everyone already get tons of funk Dolph. and the Funkadactyls? I haven't. I have yet. fun. I have tons of funk. You know. You know my favorite thing about the Road Scholars. The mustache and that they switch shirts and they're yeah, supporting, yes, they and switch supporting shirts. one another. Yeah, they wear each other's t-shirts. They're best friends. And they they're each, support, yeah, yeah, they I support love each other. Them. I love that. Support each other. Oh, like, man. oh, I love that shirt. Where'd you get it? Oh man, I bought it. Uh, WWShop.com. And this could go either way, and it would not surprise me either way. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? I'm going to say Road Scholars. Okay. Ooh. Switching it up a little bit. Up. I'm going to go with tons of funk and the oh, Funkadactyls yeah. on that one. So we'll have to see who plays bit. out on that one. Although, we, you know, we can always, we'll see how it is by the time we uh, fill out our, our cards. When it's, that, for, that when it's for cash. That hasn't changed this show. This show is. Correct. That's just. Yeah. For, that's, that's for cash. That's its own that's, thing. That's its whole it's other separated. level. Because we're coming for money. 
So there you go. They don't affect each other. Yeah. So uh, so we'll see how that plays out. So Doug, since you were the uh, the odd man out on that one, we'll let you pick up the uh, the the next matchup. Got quite a few left. Um, I will go uh, Mark Henry versus Ryback. Mark Henry versus Ryback. This is probably one of the more, I guess, hmm, I don't know how to <laughs> amped up ones feuds this is one that actually has a feud or reason for these two to fight they've crossed paths several times and now they want to see who the the strongest man is they want to go in and just beat the hell out of each other everything a good feud needs right sure okay so who are you gonna go with on this one uh surprise, surprise. i can see the face it's mark henry should win this yeah uh no. in theory if it wasn't Mania, Mark Henry would probably win this. Mm -hmm. uh, I I love Mark Henry <laughs> more than anybody else in the world. Probably. Well, this, I, Mark Henry's mom probably more than likes his mom. Mark Henry I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as much as I do. I'm but. gonna pause you real quick at where you are because I'm getting the exact same vibes that we got one year ago when we were doing our WrestleMania predictions. When you were when it was Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan, you're like, dude, I love you to death. And this pains me. It hurts so bad. But okay. Right. Uh yeah, Mark Mark Henry should win. Uh and I love him. <laughs> but 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 Ryback <laughs> is going to win. I just feel like Ryback is like if they want him to be that 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 big deal that he mm -hmm. is, like he he has to win here. Right. Yeah. I, I I'm saying Ryback. Okay, so Ryback to Pick up the victory. Okay, how about you, Curtis? Who are you gonna who are you gonna pick on this one? Uh, I mean, this one's kind of rough because I've for some reason got a uh, I don't know I got a bad feeling this match how this match is gonna play out between those two Goldberg versus Lesnar. Exactly. <laughs> um, this this match I'm really I'm like I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing this match. I just hope it's not gonna be shades of Lesnar Goldberg mm. at any any means because you know I. I don't know i just it's man it's kind of rough but um i think uh i think i'm gonna go with uh ryback for the win okay tyler um i'm the same and uh I gotta go with you know what doug said with that you know i just i would like to see mark henry win but i know mm -hmm. you know they want to make you know ryback strong i think this is sort of the the story of you know the the past meeting the future uh, you know, they, they, they have a big man who has been in the company for a long time, who probably in the next year or two, maybe three, is going to be on his way out. So this is their chance to say, this is going to be our new big guy who's, you know, going to be dominant like Mark Henry was. Uh, so it's going to be a chance for... Is he going to do his, his move to him? Was it shell, uh, shell shocked? Yeah. I don't see it. Uh, I, I, think can, that's, I think that's what's going to set him over is that right there. Yeah, if he can do it. He couldn't do it to Tensai, huh? It's because Tensai, Tensai sandbagged him. There's a difference. Well, you know, I think that's that's going to be the key. Fuck you, Tensai did not sandbag him. <laughs> Go back and watch the damn video, I'm telling you. Well, what about Paul Heyman? What? Huh? That, uh, the house show that Ryback struggled to get Paul Heyman uh, You into think it. Paul Heyman sandbagged him? Probably. Because <laughs> he probably didn't want to do it. <laughs> Would you want to do it? Hell no. Fuck yeah, I would do it. If I was getting a paycheck, you damn right I'd do it. I'd let that son bitch do it off a cage. I wouldn't give a shit. As long as I'm getting a paycheck. <laughs> you know? But I think that Half right that there... paycheck, you go to medical bills. You know, I think that's going to set Ryback over as the strongest man in that company if he can shell shock Mark Henry. Yeah. If he can get him up to do it, it'll be a quote-unquote WrestleMania moment, you know? That people will be talking about for years, you know. But I don't uh, know about years, but maybe. Well, more. you know what I mean. It's going to be in highlight packages. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Oh, the I, strongest I just, man of WrestleMania. I, I just want to know, like, was it like a couple of weeks ago? Like, there was reports that Mark Henry got hurt at a house show. Yeah, Doug, were, you, fre was... were you freaking out, Doug? You were like, yeah, tear to your. I kind of thought so. I thought about it. When I read that. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, so all in all, I'm going to go with Ryback to get the victory. So unanimous on that one as well. Um, Tyler, uh, would you like to pick the, uh, the next match? Yeah. Uh, Shield versus Orton, Sheamus, and Show. Okay, so the Shield versus Randy Orton, Sheamus, and the Big Show. Um, this one I'm kind of split on because I, I feel that Shield 
needs needs the win, whereas yeah. Orton, Sheamus, and Cho don't necessarily need it. Um, so who who are you gonna go with on this one? Um, Shield. Shield. I mean, I know they're eventually gonna get theirs. Mm-hmm. They should. I don't feel it should be at WrestleMania though. Yeah. Okay. Curtis, how about you? Uh, I believe in the Shield. Um, it would believe in the Shield. I think it's just you know. They're trying to build these guys up as the most dominant Mm -hmm. group since, like, the NWO when it first started. I love the fact that JBL puts them so over. Yeah, exactly. And they are the most dominant team to have ever come in the WWE. If you're going to make this this team and you're going to pump them up Mm -hmm. this much to the the people watching at home or or whatever, then, yeah, they have to go over at Mania. I mean, it's just, it's basic common sense. How about you, Doug? It's a two for Shield. Um, well, I feel like timeline wise, it's time. It would like in a purely measurement of time wise, it would be time for Shield to get some comeuppance for what they've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, and I know Red Robin brought this up in the Q and A back, and 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 I kind of dismissed it, and he said, "Did I feel differently now that Ryback was out of the match? Did I feel like Shield would go over then? Because I've been saying for a long time." I think they stay strong until Mania. That's the good feel-good show of the year where you send the fans home happy and the bad guys get theirs, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they did take Ryback out of the mix, and I and I I still felt like in a purely like a measurement of time-wise, that's a good amount of time for them to go strong before getting some comeuppance against them. Uh, but despite taking Ryback out, I don't feel like they did enough storyline-wise to get them to a place where they need come up and now. So I feel like that would be a waste. So I say they're probably going to keep, still keep them strong just from how they've booked from that point forward. Okay. So I'm going to say the shield as well. Okay. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say the shield. And uh, so all four of us will say the shield, but there's been talks, you know, this is strictly rumor, of course, that, uh, that Randy Orton could possibly turn heel. I don't care if he turns. I just don't want him to be behind the shield. Right. Uh, so have him, you know, attack Sheamus and allow them to get the, the pin on Sheamus as Orton walks off, you know, setting up a, a Sheamus versus Orton feud or something, something like that. But I feel like the, the pieces were put into place with Randy Orton being the voice of reason between Sheamus and the big show, you know, for, for him to have some squabble with, the, with Sheamus. So you do think he, you, you see, so you think that's foreshadowing, not red herring. You think he is going to turn? I think, I think it's more likely to happen um and that would probably be the most effective way for the shield to to get a victory still uh still you know remain quote unquote dominant you know it would be a heel win so it wouldn't be the cleanest the cleanest victory um but you know just just the way that they've been building Orton, Sheamus and Show to be the the force to to fend off the shield there has to be a chink in that armor to to allow Shield to to step in and take victory, um, and I see Orton as as possibly doing that. So, do you guys uh, see anything happening like that? I mean, obviously, it's a it's always a possibility. Uh, but I think, I think the I think it's about time they sh- give you the shock value on something happened at Mania. They haven't yeah. had something like that in a oh while. Oh my gosh! You know, yeah. so I can see Orton possibly. Flipping the script and going heel on and the JBL. Show. Randy Orton's just cost them the match. And yeah, and, and he'd be the downfall Might as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really give a and shit it's been about talk Orton. Enough. He's been wanting to turn heel. The fans have been wanting to turn heel. He's gotten <laughs> insanely stale. So <laughs> as a face, he's a heel. As a heel, he's a heel. <laughs> well, might as well have him a heel, you know, so that he can continue being. A I never heel. thought Randy made a really good face. Anyway, I thought he was no. a better heel than. Yeah, man, it's kind of like I was with Triple H. Like I always thought Triple H was a better heel. Hey. Nothing pays. you can say. Nothing's going to take what you've... I don't, I'm don't. i not married Nothing to the daughter. Paul's the daughter. So. <laughs> Hated that song. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and hop into the uh, the next match. We'll do the uh, the tag team match between Team Hell No, Dolph Ziggler, and Big E Langston. Ugh. So... This is, this is kind of one of those throw them up in the air and yeah. see which one you grab. And it, It's weird. It's just like... I, I love Hell No. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like they need to go their own way. But it's like, if they go their own ways, where do you, where do you, you know, where are they going to go? It's I'm going like, to be yeah. honest with you. I don't give a shit where Kane goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kane just always got a bit of floater. It's like, hey, we need you to put this guy. Okay, let me. 
But Daniel Bryan, I mean, that's his go up. He's, he's, he's got to go, go, he back, go up. back up. I mean, he's got to go back up. I mean, he's to me, he's one of the most over guys in the company right now. Yeah, yeah. Yes! I mean, you see the the crowd reaction when yes! when his music plays. So yeah, yeah. This this match is tough. And Man. then I read today that they're possibly going to throw a twist in on it. Yeah, the rumor and put the the girls in it and make it to where all titles are on the line in this match. I think Winner it, take all. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of I, it's it's a toss up on this one. Yeah, because you know with Ziggler and Big E, you know it's like. What are you gonna do? Put the belts on and still let you know Ziggler still go for the world heavyweight because he has the, he hasn't cashed in yet. So. Yeah, he's got till what June, July or something. Yeah, I think, he still has a while. But you know, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because here's a way that I can see them playing it out. Okay, um, for some odd reason, Biggie Langston cost Ziggler the win. You know, for whatever distraction or maybe AJ cost it. Later on in the later on the night, like you could have this be the second match, so that right. there's plenty of time for for later. You show a backstage segment with uh, Ziggler and Big E and AJ arguing or something like that, and you say, you know, you cost this. I didn't even want this match. You ruined my WrestleMania. Setting up for later in the night, Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger, possible cash in. That's just a you know a crazy storyline right. that I, that you could throw in there. I just hope they don't waste it. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not that crazy of a storyline. Okay. No, it's not. It's just well, I just hope they don't wait because I think Ziggler's just busting your balls. I think, he's, I I think Ziggler is, uh, you know, he's spot on right now, and I just hate to see him waste it yeah. on something like you know by cashing it in on WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and he just kind of gets thrown at the wind, you know, like yeah, just swept under the rug type deal. So let's do. I guess we can do, you know. The the prediction as it stands now, okay. and then if they throw in the the divas in there. So Curtis, who are you going to go with between Hell No versus oh, Ziggler and Big E, man. and then who are you going to go with with Hell No and Caitlyn versus Big E, Ziggler and AJ? If they okay, if they go with the women, mm-hmm. uh, or they put the the, the the women in the match, I'm gonna go with Team Hell No and Caitlyn. Hmm. Without the women, I'm gonna go Ziggler and Langston. Okay. How about uh, you, Tyler? I'm Sam. Same? Okay, Doug? Um, look, <laughs> Team Hell knows lost a lot of steam. There's not a whole hell of a lot more they can do with these guys as a Bring team. Dr. Shelby back. <laughs> uh, so it would make a lot sense. It would make a lot of sense for them to lose here. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say that they're still because. I can still get some enjoyment out of seeing them as a team. They just don't have anywhere to go from here. Right. So it would make a lot of sense for them to lose. It also makes a lot of sense for Ziggler and Big E to lose because mm-hmm. you don't want to burden them with the, I mean, it sounds terrible to say this, but I'm sure this is how they actually view it. You don't want to, you don't burden them with the straps if Ziggler's gonna cash in soon. Right. Uh that being said, I'm gonna say team hell no either way. Uh no matter if the women are there or not, I'm saying team hell no retains because I think like you don't have a team like built up for for either team whoever wins after this mm-hmm. and i just think it makes more sense to keep the belts on them even though i thought like this is where again like we we're talking yeah. about the show stuff i thought it's about time for them to drop and mm-hmm. move on i think they're going to retain here though so w- whether caitlin and aj are involved or not i'm saying team hell no okay i'm going to go i'm going to go the opposite of of curtis and tyler i'm going to say if it's just Hell no and Ziggler versus uh, and Big E. Hell no versus Ziggler Big E. I'm gonna say Hell no retains. If the women are involved, I'm gonna say AJ Big E and Ziggler are the winners. Say that one more time. I... No, we, we said. You said it the other way around. You said if the women are involved. No, I said if the women are involved, Team Hell No is gonna win. Right. All three of them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If the women are involved, I'm saying the other team oh, is winning. You're, Ziggler, you're Biggie, Ziggler, and AJ. And, and, yeah. and AJ. Okay, but if the women are not involved, team hell, no. team hell No gets the victory. I got you. So there we go. Is everyone clear? I made it a little confusing, but <laughs> yeah. we got it. So. I think we got it. So women, Biggie and Ziggy. No women, Hell No. No for no. No women, Hell No. I'm hell no blanket statement, okay. no matter the scenario. All right, so uh, let's go on into yes, yes. Next matchup. Let's see who wants to pick the next one. Curtis, you haven't picked one in a while. We got four. Well, Doug, you can, would you like to pick one? I damn sure would. Okay. 
So we got four matches remaining. The World Heavyweight Championship, the WWE Championship, the Streak, or Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Let's go uh, Trips and uh, Lesnar. In a no-holds-barred match. And if Triple H loses, he has to retire. And there was a lot of question about what that meant, but it seemed like they added the wrinkle uh, from Raw when Heyman said he would also not be COO. Did mm. you guys catch that? It I did seemed not. Like a I, I kind of caught that, but I, I don't know if that's... They didn't... I think, I think what he was meaning by that is, you know, he was going to resent the guys that are out there in the ring and him being that top official was going to be called. So there, therefore I don't think he would be CEO anymore. So I, I don't, I, it's kind of a weird, it was kind of weird how they played that out, but they I didn't did announce that. it like as a, they didn't say it like in a graphic or by anybody else other than Paul Heyman. So who knows how legit it would be. And it may even have been just a throwaway line, but he did say that he wouldn't be COO anymore as well mm. as whatever. So, so this is the, uh, the third, Third retirement match that they've had in, yeah, since uh, since 24. So in five years, they've had three retirement matches: Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, and now and now, and now Triple H. Yeah, it's his third retirement match. So um, so Doug, who are you gonna go with to uh, to be victorious for WrestleMania? Between Lesnar and Triple H, the game, the cerebral assassin, the king of kings. Uh, no. Um, I had made a case for both guys in my head, but I forgot what my, <laughs> my argument was because you kept spewing out names. No, I, I forgot before that. Uh, let me see. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna go Triple H. Triple H. Okay. How about you, Curtis? Uh, I'm, I've actually thought about this one, and I'm actually gonna go Lesnar on this because, you know, they haven't thought about the rest of them. Not really. I mean, I thought about this one because the simple fact of it is, I guess I was looking beyond just this match yeah. in the future. But you know, you, if you're gonna put it out there that you signed Lesnar to a contract extension, then why not have him? You know, what else is there for Triple H to do? Like, yeah. he to has nothing over. else to do. There's, to where are you gonna over. put him? Get over. Got to get over. Uh, he's already pretty much <laughs> over. Um, so not enough. I'm gonna go with. Lesnar for the win. All right, Tyler. I'm going to go with Triple H. Triple H. Okay, so we're going to have a room divided on this one. I'm going to go with uh, Lesnar as well. That's what I'm talking about. Just because of the, the retirement stipulation. And like, what what would Triple H do after this matchup anyways? You know, have it. Have He's just going to be a part-timer is all it is. Yeah. I mean, just like everybody he, else. Who would he go up against after this? I think what's going to happen, I think Sean's going to throw the towel in. Mmm. And that's going to be the finish. And there's going to be a feud between Triple yeah. H and Shawn Michaels, but it can't happen because Triple H had to retire. So <laughs> Shawn Michaels gets the last lap, and he's like, ha, 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 I was the best always. You're still my buddy, though. You're still I'm, my buddy. Yeah. I had faith in you all along, man, but you you let me down. So He should have won, he should have won Stephanie. Down. That's all I'm saying. He should have won Stephanie. So, uh, so there you go. So two on two for... Lesnar and Triple H. Uh, Curtis, go ahead and uh, pick up pick up a next the, uh, the next let's match. Let's go with we'll the World Heavyweight Championship match for the win. We the people. We the, the people. So Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger, and what was a highly talked about segment between with uh, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger completely fizzled away for a while. Then it got yeah you know, sort of a refueling with the aggression side of them. And making it more personal. Um, so, where do you where do you see this storyline in? Uh, you know, I was kind of you know thinking about this, and it's like, you know, it kind of like died out. Like, it just kind of got boring. Like, okay, I could care less. You know, I don't care who you're facing. And they're sneaking. And then you know, with watching it Monday with um, Swagger and Coulter basically beating the ever living shit out of Del Rio with. The crutches and or yeah. a crutch and a half. Yeah, uh, uh, I was kept waiting for the crutch to like stab Del Rio or something. I mean, it was getting that pretty brutal. Um, well, he shouldn't have hit hit him with the one that was broken in half. <laughs> Obviously, that was going to scrape his back to shit. <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah. So this one right here, um, I think I'm gonna go with the Jack Swagger America. We the people for the win. Really? Okay, interesting. Tyler, where where do you see this going? Oh man, I'm just like iffy in my head, like because I I want Del Rio, 
you know, to keep it. But I don't, like in my head, I just feel like Swagger is going to take it. You know, okay. It's like he, you know, he's finally coming back. You know, he came back. And Isn't he in doing court soon though? <laughs> For that nice little traffic stop. I don't know. Got. It was bogus. <laughs> but, <laughs> Profiling. I'm <laughs> Swagger. Swagger to win. Okay, so Doug. How about you, buddy? Here's here's the thing for me. Swagger has to continue on feuding with Del Rio because his character can't progress anywhere else logically from here since they've changed his character. Christian and- returns, and he's got a Canadian to go up against. Don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not really a bad storyline. It Don't, doesn't work. Everybody though. hates Canadians. It doesn't work. Hey. I don't hate Basically Canadian. this feud has to be this feud has to continue. Del Rio and, oh. and, and Swagger on some level it has to continue past this mania. And does it work? If Swagger were to win and hypothetically and he was champion, then that kills it. Then why he doesn't hate Del Rio anymore. He took what he wanted from him. He's not the guy he's not the Im- illegal immigrant who's on top of the world now. Or I mean quote unquote immigrant. He's got a work visa. Um well, that's that's his <laughs> personal views. I've said my personal views on the. Uh, you're doing the sneaking thing. Sneaking across our board. <laughs> uh, also, there is the issue of he's probably do a punishment swagger. That is, yeah. Um, but do you punish him by making him do the job and letting Del Rio retain? Is that punishment enough? Or is it is it uh, is it punishment to give him the win over Del Rio and then have Ziggler cash in on him and take it away from him anyway? I don't know. I think this is the hardest match to call. Mm-hmm. I don't know who is all going because I'm still kicking it around. I could make. A I, sp- I'm. I have left. I have yet to vote. Go, can, make a convincing argument for me okay. of, of one way or the other. I like where your head's at as far as Swagger has his punishment coming. You know. He got arrested. It got public, and you know you don't you don't want to have bad press. Can't reward him, right? Can't reward him. So here's where I see it. I agree with you in the fact that the the feud should continue. I d- it ha- not only do I think it should. It ha- can, can, Do you think there's a logical character progression to something else from this? No, and and that's the problem is that they stuck to one character. So it's like, well, okay, well, what happens when that's done? Where are you going to go from here? Swagger doesn't have anything to do. Exactly. So here's where I see it. You know, they, they said Zeb is going to stick around for a while, which is good. Which you is know, a great he, thing. He needs, he needs a good mic man. Um, I see Del Rio getting the victory. Swagger getting so upset that he attacks Del Rio after the match. And that's what causes Ziggler to come back out and cash in. So that Ziggler retains being the heel. Obviously, he's going to get the pop. You know, from the fans because he's a he's a fan, he's a crowd favorite. Yeah, the, but the, the, but doesn't the it cash kill? In doesn't work as well, Hill and Hill. You know, but doesn't it doesn't it that's kill? Why, the, that's why it would work against Del Rio right, because right. No, that's you, know, you have you have Swagger attack Del Rio, Ziggler cashes in, remains heel. If you wanted to continue the storyline, triple threat. You know, like like Curtis mentioned. Yeah, but I don't say a triple threat working though. Like, I will. It's I don't not see it Swagger's... working with that three because then it's like the whole thing is is you know. He wants the title, so if he doesn't get it and Ziggler cashes it in, then what's the purpose of him trying to still confuse with Del Rio? That's what that's where my head was at on well, maybe Swagger's punishment is they give him the belt, but then Ziggler cashes it on him. Although it doesn't work as well, I agree, as your scenario. Mm-hmm. At least it gives him something else to branch off from when Del Rio's over. Now he's pissed at Ziggler. At least he has an out. Like yeah. this is like he doesn't have any progression from yeah. this. It has to be an immigrant, dude. Uh so you're taking Del Rio now? Are you yeah. 100, you're 100 percent calling a call uh, the, a cash in? I'm not gonna say 100, percent but in my head, this would be the time to do it. This is this. How many months be, does he have after this? We're in April. I mean, he's got plenty of time. He what, still have. What is Money in the Bank? What month is that? I think it's either June or July. Yeah, it's it's. So you're they looking at either the trigger he, soon. Yeah, you're looking at either maybe three months, maybe mm-hmm. less. Right. So I would, like I said earlier, I think this. You know, they they this would be their time to do it, and it makes the most sense. You know, give give Ziggler the loss, have it be devastating to him because originally he didn't want that match. He was like, right. "No, I want my WrestleMania moment." What are you doing, AJ? Putting us into a match? He's like, "This isn't what I wanted." 
So cost him the match. He's frustrated. He's lost his WrestleMania moment, but he's still got that briefcase. Right. And so there's still a chance for him to to walk away a victor. Does it mean? One. Do you think it means more to cash in Mania, or is it? Would it mean more to be a surprise a little bit later? Um. I think it's a surprise th- all the way around, really. I don't think it's a surprise if he doesn't. I think regardless regardless of when it happens, the fans are going to be waiting for it to happen. Anytime the champ anytime the champ is down, they're going to be going, we want Ziggler, we want Ziggler, or they'll be chanting for him. Okay. Well, so they'll be expecting it. This would be the grandest way to do it. One more question for you guys, because okay. I'm trying to make you make a convincing argument for me to, to make my mind up. Okay. Does it mean more to... Let Del Rio retain, Swagger be pissed, beat him down, and then Ziggler cash in on Del Rio, like you said, and mm-hmm. that's Swagger's punishment. He's going to go away, but then he's kind of aimless because I mean he's kind of he doesn't have anything to do when he comes back necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean that may not be true. He could jump right back into the Del Rio right. stuff. We don't know, but that would may probably tie up some Ziggler Del Rio stuff, and maybe yeah. he doesn't have any direction when he comes back, or does you put Swagger over? And then risk doing a hill on hill because because obviously Ziggler, Ziggler wouldn't care. So not only does Swagger get his punishment, and he'd be working his face in that match, Ziggler. Right. You could oh. you could conceivably if you did Swagger Ziggler, I mean you could you could switch Ziggler. He's got oh, the yeah. fan base already. But does it mean more to go ahead and give Zigg, uh, give Swagger his punishment, and then give Ziggler the cash in on Swagger, and then like. Swagger has some room to grow out of the the racist stuff. He can at least he has. Well, I can challenge Ziggler too. Like at right. least there's a which 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 is which is a better way for you. What I could see possibly happening is Swagger losing not by the cleanest method. So maybe Ricardo causes a distraction. Maybe the ref didn't see Swagger pin Del Rio. Something along those lines. Something something that would have given Swagger the victory or kept him, you know, something something is going to cost Swagger the match. So he's got a reason to be angry, the reason to to go after Del Rio. So But he doesn't I guess what I'm saying is So if you if you if Ziggler cashes in, then you're you're undoubtedly doing a Ziggler Del Rio at least mini feud while right. Swagger so in punishment. Right. But and it's not even not even to say that I, I don't Swagger's even think they're going gonna away. punish him, to be honest. I mean, I honestly don't think they're gonna punish him. I mean, look how far it's gone or look how far it's been. Yeah. They, since a punishment. And I really was, don't see see him getting the punishment. Because he was getting money that not even he was getting he was getting free press. Ten, he was getting free press that not even the rock was getting. The whole thing, like what whatever your political affiliation is, what this boils down to, and if you think Vince is is too mature for this, then you're full of shit. <laughs> Vince was thumbing his nose at at the Tea Party people who didn't vote for Linda, so he wanted to paint a Tea Party dude in a bad light as a racist guy. So, I mean, that's bringing that press in that not even The Rock is getting. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like. I don't think there's any motivation for Swagger when he comes back if it's not immediately with Del Rio if Ziggler doesn't cash in on Swagger, where Swagger right. still gets it still gets the punishment. Mm-hmm. But I think he is getting punished. I don't think he, they can reward, reward. Maybe not punish, but I don't think they can reward him. I don't think he's yeah. getting strapped. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he has any... If he goes away, he has no motivation because I think Del Rio's tied up with Ziggler, and mm-hmm. I don't think he has any logical progression out of this against anybody but Del Rio if they don't pull something with Ziggler. So I don't know who the fuck I'm going to pick, by the way. So if if they don't do the cash-in, let's just say they don't even do the cash-in. Right. Cash-in does not happen. You don't think if Swagger goes over, like, that storyline's dead, you don't think there's any... Because more- his thing is... This this guy who he 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 views as an evil person, an immigrant who come in is taking like he's getting the spoils taking of his, the riches. Taking his job or whatever from right. So he's why getting, wouldn't you think that? Because Del Rio's claim is the reason you know everybody wants to come to America is because it's equal rights. Well, basically you're taking it and you're degrading the Mexicans or whatever the correct political correct name is for him, but whatever. You you know you're degrading the Mexicans. He is actually a Mexican. It's yeah. not it's not a. And so why would he still want to? Why right. wouldn't he want to get back what was rightfully his and say, hey, this is the land of equal opportunity, and I mean I can still see it either way. So if Swagger goes over, then 
yeah, you can still have the feud between Del Rio and Swagger because all Swagger's got to do is just say, I brought this back to real America. You know, we the people, this is for us, not these illegal immigrants. And then here comes Del Rio, and you've got your feud going again. I agree with you in theory. I don't disagree at all in theory, but I honestly don't believe that, that they are going to reward him because – it was pot, and you got guys who you've made examples well, out of. They don't. They don't truth, it. Evan Bourne, all those dudes got made of, uh, examples out of over pot. They can't have this guy who pu was publicly like these guys who were punished were caught by the WWE. This guy was in the news. They can't reward him. They look like hypocrites. But they, but, you know, I, I don't I mean, know. Giving him the title is rewarding him. That's why I don't think he can. I mean, in theory, I think that's completely sound. Like, but I'm saying I don't think they reward s Swagger, and I'm trying. If Del Rio doesn't still have the belt, I don't think that well, he think, has any motivation there. Like as a character, like since they 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 changed his character, he has no motivation to do anything but feud with Del Rio because they haven't given him like a branch off of his new character. And that's why I was thinking to I feel like they might cash in here and maybe if they he cashed in on a swagger who they're gonna cash in on swagger so he can't be rewarded and then still give him some character development room. Because at least he could be pissed off at Ziggler too. Uh, just out of because he took the title from him. But Swagger would still be rewarded by another title match. Yeah, but it doesn't count because, I mean, he he's already been punished. Yeah, he, he he is like, oh, I got the title. Oh no, you don't. Later, go save your suspension. Well, he would still be champion, labeled at you know he would still be labeled as a champion. Well, I got a news for you. Oh. He's already been a one time champion. Yeah. How well did that work out for the guy? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Fuck, man. I don't know. Let let me take a poll again. Who has who? I have Swagger for the win. You have? I have Del Rio. Uh, fuck, I'll be with you. All right, I'll go Del Rio, too. That's what I'm talking about. All that. Del Rio. 45 minutes later, we get to Del Rio. <laughs> yes. Somebody out there is going to be like, somebody's going to understand what I said and be like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. I'm glad he said all that rambling on shit about and it. And if you agree, and if it doesn't happen, they will be like, that motherfucker was stupid. No, because he has no motivation to feud <laughs> with anybody but Del Rio unless somebody else. There's not another Im quote unquote immigrant in a, uh, in a high enough position for him to want anything that they have. He has no one to feud with but Del Rio. He has no... He has no he reason cost to Del Rio anyone else. the championship rematch. His character is is pretty like 2D right now. He doesn't have any <laughs> there's no depth to his character. Yeah. He doesn't have a, a reason to feud with anybody else. Cost Del Rio the rematch against Ziggler, creating a still feud with uh, Swagger and Del Rio. That's where I could see it. Whatever. Okay. Someone appreciated that. I was like, oh yeah, I totally see where he's and coming if, from. And if you're on the side with Doug, let us know on our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Moving right on into the uh, the next matchup. Uh, it's not being labeled as the main event. We all know what the main event is, or is labeled as, but I'm I, I'm thinking this one will be the 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 main show, and that's going to be Undertaker versus CM Punk for the uh, for the prestigious streak of twenty and O. So this one has had quite a yeah. It's it's very personal. This one has gotten you know quite heated, quite controversial. Um, got a lot of people talking about it. So who are you guys going to go with between Undertaker and CM Punk? I have a feeling this debate will be a lot shorter <laughs> than the last match. So we'll, Curtis, we'll start with you. Look, it, it's... Or done. Uh, <laughs> just let this, this look, done. Uh, <laughs> let's give some like real reasons. I'll just be like, you don't bet against Taker at Mania. Let's, uh, oh, that let's, be more let's try to like actually... That's pretty legit like, reason. Right legit there. enough reason. You don't bet against Taker at Mania. <laughs> All right, fine. Say whatever you want, asshole. <laughs> so, Curtis, we'll start with you. All right. Undertaker uh, versus, you know, versus CM Punk. And you can't bet against The Undertaker at WrestleMania. No, so. you can't. And, 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 but, and here's the reason why. Go. But <laughs> I think it would be more of a shock, and this could be your shock of WrestleMania right here, is if Punk really did pull the upset. Like, think about it. Like, that to me would just elevate Punk just that much higher than everybody else if he beat Taker at Mania, okay. and I think, and you know, and, and I don't know how true it is, is you know, but supposedly Taker gets to handpick his opponents at Mania, and, right, and all this, and suppose you know if that's true, and if Taker did pick Punk, then you know, could this be the the could could he really? be that guy to finally 
finally, after 20 years at Mania, end the streak and make it 20 and 1. Nope, you don't bet against Ticker Mania. Moving on. <laughs> Fuck you, okay. Doug. I'm that just was a kidding. good point. Yeah. I'm busting my balls about going too long about the other one, so I was okay. being good. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, but, you know, yeah, yes, you do not bet against Taker at, at WrestleMania, but thinking about it, it's like I could possibly see it. Like, you know, kind of like I was reading a uh, story about uh, uh, Paul Bear um, talking about the first time he met CM Punk. You know, mm. when they brought him back that last yeah. run he had, um, he was standing there with Taker, and Taker's like, hey, did you meet Punk? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, he's one of us. So, like, yeah, hey, Punk, that come early, here. This guy's that earlier in, in Punk's career, and you got mm-hmm. guys like Taker saying he's one of us, that means something. You know, especially yeah. in that. How early? Because Taker was the guy shitting on Punk for not dressing like a champ during his first title yeah. run. Well, I didn't say what year. It was just the <laughs> – it didn't give me the exact year. Sorry, I didn't, didn't research it better for you, When you Doug. come to this – Hub of wrestling journalism. Uh, when you come to our facts. bubble of life, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so you, come you know, facts, I, I think for for Taker to do handpick, you know, Punk to allegedly, uh, well, allegedly handpick Punk to face him at Mania. Uh, I, you know, the shock value would be awesome. I think if Punk really did pull it off, um, will it happen? Probably not. I mean, <laughs> but that's my my case for it. I think the that would be the most WrestleMania moment of all time is Punk defeating the Undertaker with the go to sleep that's, for the one two three. That's what I picked a while back when we said it's like who could beat you know the mm-hmm. Undertaker or whatever. I and I and, and like I said, that would elevate Punk all the way to the top, past Cena and everything because he's the one person that did something that. Mm, 20 other guys could not do. But then people would immediately say, well, Cena never got the chance. So they would instantly Taker. shoot that down. Here's, I, I don't think Taker wanted to work Cena. Well, here's here's where I see, you know, I, I see what you're saying, although I'm going to disagree with you. Um, because, you know, crap, now I lost what I was going to say. I know, it was good stuff. I mean, like I said, I'm not going to go against Taker at Mania, but... I would like for the shock value. I would yeah. say that would be the well, here's, ultimate shock value. Here's what it was. And uh, that would just give Taker, CM Punk that much of, I'm the best in the world because I just beat this guy and at Taker, Mania. Yeah, and Undertaker said in an interview years ago that, you know, they asked him when he was going to finally retire, and he said whenever the fans said, I couldn't cut it anymore. So I, he wants he wants well, to go. How about your body tells you you can't <laughs> cut it anymore? That's why you can only go, show up for me. Hang on, he wants to go up against what he considers to be the top guys. You know, he he wants those guys mm-hmm. who can, you know, go toe to toe with him and, right. and and still and still hang with him and you know obviously work the kind of match that he needs to work given his his you know physical condition. <laughs> so you know you got a guy like Punk who can who can deliver when it when it comes time. Um, you know, there I don't think they're going to beat the streak. However. I would love to see to entertain a tease of it, a false finish, saying you know maybe uh, you know Undertaker had his foot underneath the rope, right, or something, or you know Heyman hits Taker with the urn and ref didn't see it until the replay or something. Let's restart the match, you know, something like that. It would obviously get tons of fans in a tizzy about oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But they probably start rioting. Oh yeah, but you know, what I'm saying? You know but. I, I see that point, and I thought about like doing like maybe what if it was twenty zero and one, like no. you know they both get like it gets thrown out, no contest, there really was no clear winner, so forth, so forth. I mean, I've kind of thought about this, you know, all mm-hmm. different scenarios, but you know, like you said, you don't bet against Taker at Mania. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a given by now. Uh, if you do, you're just a moron. <laughs> but like I said, you know, Punk's so, I mean, he's the best in the world, the- so. Ryan's Why not make him, him that much? Make him the true best in the world by beating and, Baker. And and the thing Adams. about that, CM Punk doesn't need it. He has he has the the longest title reign true. in the past twenty five years. He's got his accomplishments. Right. You know he he pinned Cena. He won the t- the title. He held onto it for so long. You know he's he's got his his name established. It's if, too many trophies in the trophy case. Yeah. If you if you want to have. Someone Never. beat the Undertaker. You wanted to. We've we've discussed this, you know, several several times. Uh, you wanted to have it to be a younger guy, who's going to have longevity, who's going to stick with the company, 
because this is going to make your guy for life. Like punk, like Punk's position on the card and all around feeling about Punk is not going to be that much more drastically different if he beats Taker or not. He's kind of a made man. He's he is where he's going to be. Mm-hmm. You're not going to drastically move his popularity or his position on the card by doing this. Yeah, but it's like too many things. Like Daniel was saying, I agree. It's like too many trophies in the trophy case, and plus. There's only one guy who ever gets this. So if Punk ever leaves, he can claim that no matter where he goes. Yeah. He's that one guy. He could know? walk out the day after Mania and be not like, that he uh, would. He's who the, wants the guy who beat the streak? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's not really going to happen. Right. But I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, I think it boils down to, like, the guy who's been mocking and destroy, uh, like, mocking the legacy of the dead guy has to get come up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. like that's like what if they're pulling the ultimate work and Paul Bear really isn't dead? <laughs> oh my and he God. comes back and calls Punk the match. <laughs> what? Huh? Oh, come on now, think about it. <laughs> now that <laughs> I'd pay for. That would be insane. That would be worth the sixty bucks for Mania or yeah. however much um, it is this year. Yeah, I mean, I think you gotta go take her. I mean there is the you don't bet it take her pet bet against Taker at Mania. We all, we're all gonna say that because it's the truth. But from an actual storyline perspective, you can't let the guy who's mocking the recently deceased <laughs> guy come out on top. You just can't do it. So Tyler weigh in on they, this or one. Or they can, and they'll just get away with it. The Attitude uh, Era's back! We're doing all this stuff all over again. So so who knows? So Tyler, what, what do you think? I'm I'm Undertaker. Say Punk! No. <laughs> So, uh, so Undertaker all around. around. Yeah. yeah, Undertaker. Take, take her for the Taker. win. Right. Making it 21-0. 21 21-0. 21 As he retires, leaving Tyler no, thoroughly it, pissed uh, off for the rest of his life. retire next year at 30. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, show up at 30. Show so up that at 30. Can, well, we that way we can see and... the final. Tw- you don't end on an odd year. You got to do it like, you know, 22. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to do that one, I'd go to 23. And, That's or 24. Odd, odd numbers. You can go to 24. <laughs> No, I like 22. That's okay. a good number. Whatever. So, final okay. matchup there for WrestleMania. Go. The Rock versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. Redemption or revenge? What's it going to be? Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this one has uh, has obviously been hyped up to be the most anticipated rematch in the history of all of professional wrestling and whatever else they want to word it. So, uh, so Tyler, we'll start with you. Rock versus Cena, WWE Championship on the line, WrestleMania 29, New York, New Jersey. We were planning on being there, but it didn't work out for us. So we'll be watching from thing. the comfort of our own homes. Don't have to deal with the weather. Your mom's. My mom. I'm going to be making queso. Uh, I'm Your famous with, queso? Uh, friend famous friend queso. Famous, friend famous. That's right. Uh, John's. You coming? Uh, yes, it looks like I uh, talked to uh, the Maverick, and um, I think he's going to make an appearance. All right. Sounds yeah. good. More the merrier. So, There you go. Yeah. Cool. So, Tyler, who are you going to go with? C- plus, plus, I want to come and take all you fools' money. Yeah, you wish. Hey, hey, hey. Boom! You all wish. You got to be careful of his mom. Yeah, my mom placed second last year, and she picked at random, so. I can pick it random. Okay, so there you go. So Tyler, five, five I'm bucks. I'm picking uh, John Cena. John Cena. His, uh, revenge Redemption. Revenge Redemption. And apparently, uh, Doug is throwing up the hustle loyalty respect. You can't see me, Doug. Who taking the Rock's title? Taking the Rock's title. So Doug, do you agree with Tyler? Yeah, I'm going Cena. Okay. How about how about you, you can't Curtis? See me. This is this is one of the harder ones. This is This is uh, really hard because you know I don't I don't think it's hard at all. I think the only I This think, is harder than the Del Rio Swagger one. Oh, the fuck it is not. Did you not listen to the layers that I, <laughs> that I laid out? Dude, you lost me at like <laughs> it, You lost it is me like onions <laughs> when you Look, know, the I only know. reason Rock w- <laughs> the only logical reason for the Rock to win here is if Vince says Oh man, I hate that everyone knows that Cena should win and is going to win, and then swerves it just for the sake of swerving it. <laughs> he swerved us <laughs> uh, on a colossal right. scale. I don't feel like the the hype for this match has been as big as it was last year. Of course, last year was supposedly the first and once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime, but yeah, here we are. Never life. Never again. We're, we're we're seeing this again. Dirty. Um, actually, I think I'm going to go with The Rock for the win on this Dirty. one, but. 
Um, supposedly Money. they're going to since you know, uh, I, I look for like the extreme rules pay per view to where that's when Cena will take it. I don't think they're going to let Cena take it off uh, at the biggest show of the year. I think they'll let him take it off one of their little chump shows like Extreme Rules or something. Well, Extreme so Rules had I'm, the match of last year on it. I'm gonna go with yeah. The Rock. It had two Jeez. hell. It had two good matches. It had the uh, Sheamus. Uh, the Extreme Rules last year was probably the best pay per view yeah. year. Dane O'Brien versus Sheamus. Two out of three two falls, three which falls. is awesome, and Cena Brock, which is awesome. Yeah, very good stuff. Go back and check that one out. Um, this is where the dilemma comes into play for me because. You know, like I, like like we discussed earlier in the night, um, you know, they show shades of a possible Cena. You know, this is strictly for revenge. It's a selfish move on him. He's letting it get to him. Um, so, what better way to to have it boil over than to have Rock give him the win again, letting him uh, get, you know, take out his frustrations at Extreme Rules. Um, on the other hand, you have the Rock, who's going to be part time. Um, we don't know when we'll see him again, but I know we'll see him at Extreme Rules. So, if Rock retains, Cena is not the guy who takes it off of him. Brock will win it from Lesnar will win it from the Rock if Cena doesn't. Mm. And uh, and I think uh, both Brock and Lesnar are scheduled to be at Extreme Rules, so that could uh, possibly set that up. They both extended their contract. Yeah, but so, rumor has it they want him to for for SummerSlam between those two. So, yeah. you know, will it be for the strat? Won't it be? But I mean, the build up alone. Lesnar cost. Yeah. The Rock. I mean, were they going to compare contracts on this? I mean, I mean, <laughs> he's got the bigger contract on the deal, but yeah. Who's, uh, who's is bigger? Uh, contract. So, come on. Like now. I said, uh, I'm going to go with The Rock on this one. Oh, yeah. So, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know. I just. Uh, We'll have to see. You jabronis there's, over there picked the wrong one. There's, there's still time to, to change. Because you can't see us. Our time is now. I can see you perfectly fine. So Curtis, I can, uh, since since we're the only ones in the room now, hey, that guys, makes sense on yeah. this on this whole match right here. You guys want to make fifth grade misogynist jokes? Go ahead. <laughs> we'll listen to them. Go we'll eat tell you some, how funny you are. Go eat some fruity pebbles, you candy ass. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> You need some aloe vera because you just got burned. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's going to wrap up our WrestleMania thoughts. Let us, we got Victor's Q&A earlier, right? Yeah, we did. So let us know what you think on the on the topics of that. Speaking of topics, hot topic, one hot topic. Uh, if you did not hear, the widow of Owen Hart has reached an agreement with WWE to allow them to use his image and name. It's about freaking time. Very big news. So uh, It'll be your next year Hall of Fame, Owen Hart. You think so? Probably. How about you guys? Yeah, more than likely, and uh, great, and they'll have DVDs coming out now that they got oh, yeah. rights to video use game. his name and images. Video, it'll be in video games. Oh you yeah, go. they're gonna they're gonna milk that cow for everything it's worth right now. Mm -hmm. Leave us some feedback on the Facebook page. Tell these chumps that how brilliantly I laid out that the <laughs> onion layers of of Swagger's lack of character Dude, you had motivation. Me lost on that because <laughs> you don't understand English. Uh, no, I understand perfectly. <laughs> Maybe I'll just speak Doug, but I mean, I... I you know, Doug and Eve. That was Doug and way, I know way. there's at least three, One person maybe there, that'll agree with you. There's at least three people out there that are like, oh, he's so fucking right. And they're going to write in <laughs> on our Facebook page <laughs> at WNS Podcast and let me know about it. Thanks, guys, in advance. I appreciate... <laughs> I appreciate... And if it enough. doesn't play out like that, then they'll be like, that dude's a douchebag. He doesn't know I listened to all that shit and, and believed it. I lost money because of that. Oh, they all, I they lost. all think I'm a douchebag, but they're going to be like, he. they're always like, he's got some very valid points. I've got to <laughs> give him credit. <laughs> so there you go. Let us know what you think. Post on our Facebook page, WNS Podcast. Also check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com. WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube, WNS Video. And subscribe to our show on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. If you want to find Doug, he's right here punching me. <laughs> Playing punchies. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at <laughs> WNS Podcast for the main site, WN Source. We're all in tout, bitches, at WNS Podcast. Tout at how right I was about the swagger stuff. Hashtag WNS Podcast. So there you go. Thank you, Curtis, for stepping in and coming in. Appreciate tonight. it, guys. And join us on the uh, show. We'll see podcast you. Podcast is good. Thanks for the shirt. Appreciate <laughs> the shirt. Yeah. Well, well, I'm going to rock it out. We'll see you at the I'm Mania party. A, and uh, I'll wear it there. Don't spill anything on it because you only get the one. Did y'all 
Okay. You only get one. You, okay. You, you'll have to purchase the others. Damn it. So right. there you go. So, uh, Maybe I won't wear it. One but, freebie. And then we'll definitely see you at, at Gulf Coast. At so, Gulf uh, Coast. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. So for the podcast crew, I am Dane O'Haran. I'm Tyler Abear. I'm Jack Swagger's lack of character, motivation, and development. <laughs> and we'll see you all next week. <laughs> see you in Maine. <laughs>